broadcasts, which are usually heard over many of these stations from 3 to 5.15 p.m. Eastern Wartime, in order that the following special broadcast may be heard. Gillette's Cavalcade of Sports is on the air. Gillette presents from historic New Orleans the annual Sugar Bowl football game, which this afternoon brings together the Crimson Tide of Alabama and the Blue Devils of Duke University. This is Bill Brangle with Harry Wisney, our play-by-play -play reporter, greeting you for the Gillette Safety Razor Company and wishing you a victorious Happy New Year. Gillette is your radio host at the World Series, Kentucky Derby, and many another sports classic throughout the year. Also, Gillette's Cavalcade of Sports is on the air regularly every Friday night, coast to coast, with a top fight boxing match for your entertainment. These weekly broadcasts, as well as today's Sugar Bowl game, are shortwave to our troops overseas through the facilities provided by the Armed Forces Radio Service. We've been watching the pregame activities here in New Orleans. The two teams, that is Duke and Alabama, have had their pregame warm-ups. The Duke team wearing traditional blue jerseys with white numerals and white armbands. And the Alabama team, of course, with the crimson jerseys and the white numerals. It's a beautiful day here in New Orleans. A brilliant, warm southern sun is shining. It's been rather warm during this past week. Yesterday, as a matter of fact, during the last 24 hours, the lowest was 64 degrees and the mercury reached some 78 degrees, which made it rather warm for playing football. But overnight, we've had a bit of a change, and at the present time, the temperature is about 45 degrees, making it cool and crisp, and it will be very delightful for the spectators as well as, of course, for the football players. Now, the stadium where the Sugar Bowl game is played is the regular football stadium of Tulane University. It was increased to its present size by the Sugar Bowl organization. Originally handling some 25,000 persons, the stadium was increased first to 38,000. And when that proved to be quite a bit less than was actually needed, it was boosted by capacity of approximately 73,000. The stadium is an actual bowl, oval in shape, with, as I mentioned before, a solid steel upper deck arrangement. The press box at the very top of the upper stands, while the broadcasting booth from where the Blue Network sends you this game is slung just below the same stands, that being on the west side of the stadium. We're waiting now for the flag raising, which will get underway in just a few moments. Some eight bands are out on the field getting themselves set, and they'll go through their preliminaries in just a moment. First, uh, behind the Sugar Bowl, as in all, all bowl games, there is naturally some history. Now, in the case of the Sugar Bowl, it goes back to March of 1934, when a small group of civic-minded lovers of sport met to form the New Orleans Midwinter Sports Association, the sponsors of this game, and six other sporting events that were staged in connection with the game each year until wartime called a halt to the additional sport entertainment. The venture is purely civic, not controlled by or connected with any commercial interest or any professional sport. The charter provides against private profit, and surplus funds are dedicated to charitable, religious, and educational purposes. The name Sugar Bowl should be obvious, for it's staged in the heart of the cane-producing section of Louisiana, which is known as the Sugar Bowl of the Nation. This stadium, situated on what is now the ground of Tulane University, was in colonial days the home of Echer de Bore, where crystallized sugar was first made from cane juice. 300 guarantors produced some $30,000 to stage the first Sugar Bowl game, and their money was promptly returned. No assistance has been asked since, with the exception of debenture bonds that were issued for the purpose of enlarging the stadium. The president of the Midwinter Sports Association this year is A.B. Nicholas. The bands now are pretty well set out on the field. We have bands from the local high schools, Fort Jay High School, Holy Cross College, St. Aloysius College, Jesuit High School, Samuel J. Peters High School, Warren Easton High, and Nicholas High. In addition, the American Legion band is out there. And then we have Bama's Million Dollar Band just below us in the stands here. We're going to try to run down the opening lineup for you, give you some idea of the boys who will face each other when the opening kickoff gets the ball game underway. We'll start with it and have to stop, of course, when the flag-raising ceremony gets underway proper. Take the Duke lineup first and take both ends. At the left end, you'll find Clark Jones. He's been the number one end on the team, weighs only 176 pounds, a great defensive man and a good pass catcher. He's one of two foreigners, as they put it, on the starting team, nine of them being native Carolinians. And he's a Navy student, comes from Richmond, Virginia, six feet tall, 19 years of age. At the opposite end, that would be right end, is Harry Reese. He's a standout on defense. Harry's a Navy student from Greensboro, North Carolina, weighs 185 pounds, and uh, stands six feet. In the tackle positions, at right tackle will be Frank Irwin. He's a senior who's been a regular all season. Husky and strong, he's a 205-pound Navy student, six feet three inches, 21 years of age, and he hails from Raleigh, North Carolina. 
He's made several all Southern 11. At the opposite tackle, left tackle, Fred Harrison, or Hardison, that is, H-A-R-D-I-S-O-N. Fred Hardison moved up from the 1943 White Squad and has been nothing short of a sensation. His speed, despite his 210 pounds, has enabled him to get on on the punch very fast. He's just turned 18. He's from Wilmington, North Carolina, where he won seven athletic letters. He stands six feet, one inch tall. The bands now are starting to move from the north to the south end of the stadium. We'll continue with the Duke lineup for you, picking up from the guard positions just as soon as we get an opportunity. The American Legion band heads the parades with its color guard, and the other bands from the high schools follow. They come out in a sort of a V formation. They're moving gradually down to the south end of the stadium now. The bands are playing, as you can probably well hear. The flag raising will take place at the uppermost end of the southern end of our Sugar Bowl Stadium. Some of the bands come out the northwest gate and some out of the southeast gate. They converge in that V formation. Meanwhile, another one of the bands coming down the west side here, moving from the south to the north end, swing sharply to the right, and then will follow in behind the west side of the V. That is the American Legion band that you can hear playing now, only one of them. The color guard has reached the southern end of the stadium, stands there, the American Legion band directly behind it, and then three high school bands on each side form a V. The fourth high school band, is, or the seventh high school band, I should say, because there are three on each side of the V, is coming in from the east side of the stadium in single file and cutting across just on the 30-yard line. And apparently will swing all the way over toward the west side over here. This is really a very fine day in New Orleans. Beautiful weather, just as cool and crisp as you'd want it. 40, 45 to 47 degrees, as I mentioned a moment ago. The color band of the the band that came over from the east to the west side is now stretched across the 30-yard line here now. And they've come in between the American Legion band and the V, and they form the three dots in the dash, making the V for victory and, of course, the three dots in the dash, which are symbolic. The national anthem will be played in just a few moments. The color guard stands at attention down between the goal line and the five-yard line at the south end of the stadium. The director of the Legion band mounts the podium just behind the color guard. He raises his hand for attention from the eight bands, and here is the national anthem. down here on the field were playing the national anthem. The stars and stripes were raised from the flag uh, pole down at the south end of the stadium. Now to continue on with the lineup as we were trying to give it to you before, the ends, as I mentioned, were Clark Jones, and the right end is Reese Harry. The gentleman's name is Reese Harry, not Harry Reese, as I mentioned before. In the tackle positions, you'll have Frank Irwin and Fred Hardison. Now to take the guard, at the right guard position is Ernest Knott. He's known as Bear Knott gets that nickname Bear because of his toughness, they say, and the number one guard. The defensive field general pulls out the block on some plays. He stands 5 feet 10, weighs 195 pounds. He's a Navy student from Albemarle, North Carolina, and has made several All-America teams. 
At the left guard position is Frank Sink, who won a letter at Duke in 1942, spent 43 in the Army, and rejoined the club this fall after an honorable discharge from the service. Sink came out of Lexington, North Carolina, weighs 195 pounds, and is six feet tall. At the center position is John Crowder, an 18-year-old Navy V-12 student from High Point, North Carolina. He weighs 185, and he's six feet one inch. In the Duke backfield, at fullback is Tommy Davis, the veteran of the transplanted Rose Bowl game in Durham, back on January 1st, 1942. He won the Southern Conference blocking trophy this year. He's been named on several All-America teams. He weighs 185, 5 feet 11, 23 years of age. At right half is George Clark of Wilson, North Carolina. He's scored 36 points so far this year. He's a Navy student weighing 180 pounds, and he's 5 feet 11, just 19 years of age. At left half is... Gordon Carver, the top pass catcher on the team. He's caught 13 passes for some 252 yards. He's a hometown boy, started at Durham High School before enrolling at Duke. He weighs in at 186. He's six feet tall. He's a Navy student and also a track star. And at the quarterback position is John Creaser. He's the number one blocking back. He didn't go out for football last year. He's a Navy student from the Keys Rocks in Pennsylvania, and he's just turned 18 years of age. We'll have the Alabama lineup for you in just a moment. You know, in football, you never can tell which way the brakes of the game will go. In shaving, however, the brakes are all on your side when you go about the job the all Gillette way. Yes, sir, this is how to put tough beard away in a hurry and get a refreshing lift at the same time. All you do is prepare your beard with Gillette shaving cream and whisk it off smooth as sailing with a Gillette blue blade in your Gillette razor. Choose the type of cream you prefer, Gillette lather or Gillette brushless. Both of fast-acting, thorough-going beard softeners. Fans try shaving this more enjoyable all-Gillette way. Ask for Gillette shaving cream, lather or brushless, only a quarter. Believe me, you get shaves that are shaved and save money, too. The cheering you heard a second ago was for the Alabama team, which has just come out on the field. Let me run down that Alabama lineup for you quickly. At right end is Ralph Jones, the second veteran of the starting team. Jones has played two years at Union University in Tennessee before going to Alabama. He tips the beam at 200, and Florence, Alabama, is his home. At left end is Jack McConville, one of the best defensive ends on the team, and a fair pass receiver. He weighs in at 184, making him the second heaviest flanker on the squad. At right tackle is Tom Whitley, one of Alabama's lightest starting tackles in years. He was honored on the Associated Press All-Southeastern Conference picking. Weighs 190 pounds, and he's 6 feet 2. The left tackle is Buddy Edwards, one of the youngest members of the squad. He weighs 195 pounds. He's 17 years of age, 6 feet 1. His hometown is Atala, Alabama. At the left guard is Jack Green, one of two linemen on the team who could be called a veteran. Green was a member of the tied Orange Bowl squad in 42, but he saw little service. He is a USAAF discharge and he hails from Center, Alabama. John Wozniak, the right guard, he made all southeastern this year. He's the top kickoff specialist and his booted consistently around 48 yards. He tips the beam at 180 pounds, and he comes from Fairhope, uh, Pennsylvania. That's Fairhope, Pennsylvania. The center is Vaughn Mancha, one of the outstanding centers of the Southeastern Conference. Despite his 230 pounds, he's one of the fastest men on the squad. His hometown is Birmingham, Alabama. In the backfield, at quarterback is Hal Self, the holdover from the 1942 squad. He weighs in at 175. He scored twice and two of the six times he carried the ball this season. The cheers go up now for Duke as it comes out of the southwest gate. We'll play at fullback. Another is a 17-year-old. Hodges hails from Hueytown in Jefferson County. A demon on defense. Has plenty of leg drive as a freshman. And uh, lives for football, they say. He was injured in mid-season and begged to get back in the uniform, even though his hurt was not entirely healed. The teams now are out here. The toss is getting underway. The uh, captains for both teams are out there now. The officials are with them. Well, the officials and the captains are being placed in a position for a picture here. And the photographers step back to get their picture, so we'll pause for station identification. You're listening to the Sugar Bowl game broadcast by the Gillette Safety Razor Company. This is the Blue Network. Out on the field, we have the picture still being taken of the officials and the two captains. That is the captain of Alabama and the captain of Duke. The officials, by the way, are J.D. Thomason, referee. Thomason is from the University of Georgia. 
The umpire is Gus K. Tibell of the University of Wisconsin. The linesman is George Gardner of Georgia Tech. And the judge, George Proctor, the Virginia Polytechnic Institute. Thomason, Tibell, and Proctor have never worked a Sugar Bowl game before. Gardner is the only one with Sugar Bowl experience. He was headlinesman, the same position at which he will officiate today for the Tulsa, Tennessee game that was played on January 1st of 1943. As the coin came down, the Alabama captain signaled that he would defend the north goal, which is to our left. We are in the west stands of the Sugar Bowl Stadium in the city of New Orleans to bring you the broadcast of the... Alabama Duke football game. Alabama will defend the north goal, which is to our left as we look at the gridiron. Duke will, of course, defend the south goal, which is to our right. And Alabama will kick to Duke. Duke will receive to start the ball game. And now for your play-by-play uh, reporter, Harry Wismer. Come in, Harry. Thank you very much, Bill Pringle. Good afternoon, sports fans throughout the world. We're ready for the opening kickoff of the Sugar Bowl Classic, the 11th annual Sugar Bowl Classic. It's football weather here in New Orleans. Wozniak will kick off for Alabama. Holding the ball will be their star left halfback, Harry Gilmer. Alabama kicking off with the north goal at the back. Duke receiving with the south goal at theirs. The lineup says given to you who are correct. We'll run over them again soon after the start of the ball game. The officials are ready. The teams are ready. The field is ready. The place is sold out. The ball game is on. Wozniak approaches the ball. It's a beautiful end over end move down the field. Taken on the 10-yard line by Davis. He's brought back to the 20, the 25, and he's filled up at the 33-yard line before he is finally stopped. Up back to the 33, and he's hit in there by Rob Jones, the left end of Alabama. All right, Duke's ball, first and ten on their own 33. The ball 15 yards up to the far side of the field, eastern sideline. The Duke backfield, freezes his quarter. Clark at left half, Davis at full, Carver at right halfback. All right, out of the huddle, they come up over the ball, comes Johnny Crowder, the center, lining up on a single wing, back off to the left. Strong for left with a single wing, and the tailback roll is Gordon Carver. Ball is passed to Carver. Cut, Carver cuts off to the 30, the 34, the 35, the 40, the 45. Midfield. 40, 35, 30, 25. Pull down from behind on the 15-yard line. A beautiful run down the field, all the way down to the 15-yard line. First and 10, finally tackled by Wozniak. First and ten to go for Duke and a beautiful run all the way down to the 15-yard line as they race through the right side of the Alabama forward wall. And he really moved with that ball as he passes to Clark behind the line of scrimmage. Clark cut across that sideline, strikes beautifully, moved, follows interference perfectly, and was finally brought down on the 15-yard line. All right, single wing back off to the right. The ball goes to the fullback on the play. Takes a direct pass to sm- center. Smashes it the middle of the line and is stopped by Matthew, the center of Alabama. No gain in the play. Second down, 10 to go. The ball 16 yards in from this side of the field. The score, nothing and nothing. First period. The powerful Duke team got off to a roaring start. All right, second down, 10 to go. The ball in the 15 yard line of Alabama. 16 yards in from this side of the field. The score, nothing and nothing. Duke's ball. Duke back in the huddle. Calling signals from the huddle is Gordon Carter. Out of the huddle, they come up over that football. Lining up in a single wing, back off to the right, strong to the right, clock in the tailback roll. Ball is passed to George Clark. He takes the pass behind the line. He's up to 15, the 14, the 10, and he fumbles the ball. There's a pile up point at the six yard line, and Duke recovers their own fumble. Duke recovered their own fumble, and Carver recovered the fumble. Carver recovered his own fumble on the seven and a half yard line of Alabama. Alabama had a grand chance to recover that ball deep in their own territory, but Carver came in on the alert always and moved in to recover that fumble. So now it's Duke's ball. The ball right in front of the goal post, seven and a half yards away. Third down. Third down. About two yards to go for the first down, seven yards to go for the touchdown. Out of the huddle they come. Strong to the right in the single wing. George Clark to the tail back roll. Waiting for the pass from center. It goes to Clark. Clark gets the 10, the 9, and he's hit on the 5-yard line. Spins his way to the 4, and he's hit in there by Jack McConville, the right end of Alabama. Down to the 4-yard line. First down, goal to goal. First down. Unless, of course, there's a discrepancy in the rules. We're waiting for the officials. The referee looking over the setup carefully. From the place the ball is on the field. Why? It's a first down, but if there's a penalty on the last play, which there is, as the referee picks up the ball, and it's a penalty of... We're watching him step it off. One, two, three, four, five-yard penalty for... Backfield in motion. Five-yard penalty. Takes the ball back to the 13-and-a-half-yard line of Alabama. Duke ball at that spot. Duke penalized for backfield in motion. Back in the huddle goes Duke to Duke backfield. Freezer, Clark, Davis, and Carver. The score, nothing and nothing. First period, Duke starting off with a rush after receiving the opening opening kickoff. 
Out of the huddle now comes the Duke Blue Devils. Over the ball comes to center, Johnny Crowder, swung to the right, the single wing, their great star, left half back, George Clark in the tailback roll. Waiting for the pass to center, goes to Clark, Clark fading the pass. The ball is trying to get it away, he can't, he's got the 15, he's down to the 10, the 5, the 4, the 2, a touchdown for George Clark. And a beautiful play. Clark couldn't find anyone to throw to, he was all the way back to the 20-yard line. He threw his hands up into the air, looking for someone to pop that football to. The receiver didn't get into the open. He started to wriggle and twist his way down the middle of the Alabama defense. He got to the 15, the 12, the 10. He struggled to the 5, rolled to the 2, was hit, cut away from the tackle, and went into the end zone for the touchdown, and Duke leads 6 to nothing. Harold Raider will try the extra point. He's the left end, number 63, 167 pounds, 6 foot tall, from Toledo, Ohio. Score 6 to nothing in the opening few minutes of the ball game. Duke Lee. Duke took that ball all the way from their own 33 yard line across the goal line without losing possession. Great playing of George Clark was the outstanding factor in that drive. All right, Raider will do the extra point kicking here. We're waiting for the pass from center. Come in, there it is. The kick is in the air. The kick is perfect. And the score is 7 to nothing. Raider split the uprights with a perfect boot. And the score is Duke 7, Alabama nothing as the Sugar Bowl 11th annual classic begins here in New Orleans, Louisiana. And it was a great playing of number 28, George Clark, that made that touchdown possible. The crack clock was trapped deep behind his own line as he tried to throw a forward pass. But he scooted away from the lineman of Alabama as the Crimson Tide failed to tackle on the particular play. He moved across the middle. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very sorry for the interruption in our service. The game of the Sugar Bowl, however, will be resumed at the earliest possible moment. time in the ball game calls timeout. 
The coaches of these two 11s for the Alabama team, we have Frank Thomas, the head coach. You know much about Frank Thomas's record, one of the outstanding records in the history of football coaching. Malcolm Laney is the end coach for Alabama. Ben Ennis is the coach of the tackles. Lou Bostick, the coach of the guards. And Red Houston does the coaching of the center men. The pivot aces, including Bob Matthews, who made many All-American teams this year. Substitute coming in for two. And now the coaching staff of the Duke team, Eddie Cameron, the head coach, Doug Stanley, formerly associated with Charlie Bachman at the University of Florida, is the end coach out here and recognized as one of the best flank coaches in the country. Duffy Hagler is the line coach, and Bob Cox, the backfield coach for the Duke team. Ed Sharkey comes in at center for Duke, replacing Johnny Crowder. All right, now we had uh, over the blue network a line break on a portion of the network, but it's all set now, so I'll recap a bit. The scoring play, perhaps some of you folks around the nation on some of the stations will happen to be unfortunately cut out. Missed the scoring play. Alabama kicked off to the Duke team this afternoon to open the 11th annual Sugar Bowl game. Duke team took it back to the 33-yard line. On seven plays, it went across for a touchdown with George Clark doing most of the ball carrying, his last dash being a seven-yard run. All right, back to the ball game, shifting right. Ball goes to Gilmer. Gilmer gives it to Hodges. Hodges are at the 30, the 25, the 20, the 19-yard line before he is finally stopped by George Clark and Tom Davis. A beautiful reverse winding up in the hands of the fullback, number seven, Hodges, taking it from Harry Gilmer, the great passer of Alabama. Moves it down to the 19-yard line. First and ten to go for the Crimson Tide. Out of the huddle now comes Alabama. Over the ball comes back to the center. Using a T, shifting left into the box. In the tailback, spot is due. Due takes the pass behind the line. He struggles his way for a yard before he's finally toppled in the 17th. He was hit by Ed Sharkey, the new center for Duke. Ball 15 yards just the far sideline, the eastern side of the field. The score is 7 0. Duke beating Alabama, threatening. We're going to have a funny hot football game out here this afternoon. Alabama going back into the huddle. Second down and about 8 to go for that first down. 17 yards to go for the tying touchdown if they have the extra point. Out of the huddle they come. Using the T, shifting into the box, right or left, shifting right. The old Notre Dame shift. The ball goes to Gilmer. Gilmer to Hodges. Step to 15, to 13, to 12 before he is finally stopped. And he's hit by Baron Hodgson and Sharkey. That was Hodges, the fullback, carrying it. Four, six yards in the third down, two and a half. The ball to the 12 yard line of the Duke team. The score is 7 0. Duke leads Alabama. Alabama's got the ball to the Duke 12 yard line. The ball 15 yards into the far side of the field. Alabama's back to you. Dolphins, Porter, Gilmer, and left half. Hodges at full. Two at right half back. What a football game we've had already in this first period out here in the Sugar Bowl Stadium. Out of the huddle they come. Up over the ball comes Vaughn Match in the center. Gifting off to the right. Harry Gilmer. JP hasn't passed yet. It's a high pass to Hodges. He goes down to the 8 yard line before he is finally stopped. A beautiful bit of manipulation on the part of the fullback Hodges. Saved the Alabama team. He moves down before Knobson sinks the guards converts to tackle him. It's a first down goal to go for Alabama. Eight yards away from a touchdown. Four downs to make eight yards. That was a high pass to the center, Vaughn Manchin. It hits the fullback Hodges on the left shoulder high. He pulled it out beautifully. Followed the center turns for the first down. All right, here we go. Shifting right. Gilmer the tailback spot. Ball goes to Gilmer. Gilmer fakes the pass behind the line. He's down to the six-yard line for two more yards. Heading off the right guard of Duke before sink and not make the tackle once more. Second down, six to go for the touchdown. Duke leads Alabama seven to nothing. Alabama's on the Duke six-yard line. The score is seven nothing now. Duke is leading, but Alabama's coming. Self in that backfield with two Gilmer and Hodges. That front line for Alabama's doing some tremendous blocking. Up over the ball comes Grant to the center, waiting for the shift right or left. Shifting right, Gilmer back. Gilmer is at the 11-yard line. He's at the five-yard line, and he's hit at the five and a half-yard line by Tom Davis. Hit back to five yards. Five and a half yard line by Tom Davis. Third down, five and a half yards to go for the touchdown. The ball 16 yards in the near side of the field. Score seven, nothing. Duke leading. Whether or not they can get across now, their great passer hasn't thrown a pass yet. They've done all their moving with that football after recovering the fumble by running the ball. And Hodges is made, making most of the yards. Out of the huddle they come now. Over the ball comes back to the center. Wide to the left, wide to the left. Shifting off right, Gilmer back. Gilmer gives the ball to Hodges, Hodges. Then there's a forward pass. Down to the two-yard line, the one-yard line. He's going to that spot. Going to the one-yard line. Jones took the ball to the one-yard line. Yard away from the touchdown, and Tom Davis made the tackle there. Walked down the yard to go for a touchdown. Walked down the yard to go for a touchdown. One yard away from a touchdown. Self, Gilmer, Hodges, and two in the backfield. The score, seven nothing, two fleeting. That was a beautiful forward pass from Harry Gilmer to the left end, Ralph Jones. 
Jones took it on the two-yard line with second on the one-yard line. Now out of the huddle they come, up over that football, using the shift to the right, the ball is passed off. Hodges it over for a touchdown! The fullback Hodges flashes over the middle, the score is 7-6. to six. Hodges flips the guards of the Duke team, the great Paranox and Freddie Sink. Boom, over for the score, and the score is 7-6. to six. Morrow comes in to add the extra point, impossible by placement. Hugh Morrow coming in, 176 pounds, 5 foot 8, from Birmingham, Alabama. 7 to 6 is the score now in the first period. The Duke Blue Devils and the Alabama Crimson Tide. 30 out of 36 is his record for the year. Hugh Morrow will try the extra point from the 10 yard line. Holding the ball will be Harry Gilmer at the 10 yard line. Morrow will try the extra point. Waiting for the pass and center. There's the pass and center. It's a high pass. The ball is juggled. The ball is in the air. The ball is no good. And the score is 7 to 6. There were a succession of events there that created the loss of the extra point. Ranch's pass was bad. The ball was fumbled by Gilmer. He put it on the turf. Ball's kick was high into the air as he took his vision off the ball. And as a result, the score is 7 to 6. Duke still leads Alabama with six minutes left to play in the first period. 7 to 6 is the score. Alabama will kick off. Alabama will kick off for the north goal at their back. Duke will receive with the south goal at there. Hodges moving off to the sideline, coming over to talk to Frank Thomas. Albright is now in at right halfback, replacing Sewell, too. Hodges is changing his belt. Number 33 warming up. And it's Freddie Grant coming in as fullback for the touchdown maker, Hodges. Grant coming in. All right, Alabama will kick off with the north goal at their back. Duke receiving with the south goal at there. Score 7 to 6. Plenty of excitement, plenty of thrills out here as Gillette brings you the outstanding football game for the Super Bowl Classic down here before 73,000 fans on a perfect football afternoon. Johnny Wozniak will kick off for Alabama. Harry Gilmer will hold the ball. There's the whistle. He approaches it. He's under it. It's a driving kick down the field taken on the 10 yard line by Tom Davis. Back to the 15, the 20, the 25, 30. And he's piled up on the 33-yard line and knocked out of bounds by Vaughn Nash the center of Alabama. First and 10 to go for Duke on their own 33-yard line, 15 yards in from the east side of the field. Cliff Lewis is now in at left halfback for the Duke team, and Bob Smith is in at quarterback. Freddy comes in at right guard, number 64, from New Village, New Jersey. He replaced Baronot. Notch is out of there. Freddy is in. Now the Duke backfield is Bob Smith, Cliff Lewis, Tom Davis, and Gordon Carver. Out of the huddle they come. Cliff Lewis is in the tailback position. Comes from Cleveland, Ohio. Strong to the left in the single wing with Lewis deep. The ball is passed to Lewis. Lewis cuts back. He follows his interference. Is toppled at the 35 after a two-yard advance. Cutting right over the middle of the Alabama line. Hit by Vaughn Mancha, the center of Alabama. Second down. Eight to go for Duke. The ball in the 35-yard line of the Duke team. The score 7-6. Duke leads first period. Plenty of excitement. People have been on their feet throughout most of the first quarter. The excitement has been intense. Duke team goes back into a huddle. Gordon Carver calls the signals in the huddle. Out of the huddle they come. Up over that football comes Ed Shockey. Single wing back off to the right. Lewis in the tailback position. The ball is back to Lewis. He's fading the pass. He can't get it away. He's faking the ball now. He's up to the 29, the 30, the 32, the 35. He's hit it for 40 and gets to the 41 before he is finally stopped. It was Buddy Harris, Buddy Edwards, who finally made the tackle. Hit him high around the shoulder pad. Third down and about two. Ball on the 41-yard line, 15 yards in the left side of the field. That was Cliff Lewis catching the right side of the Alabama line, smashing on the play, getting around there beautifully on the fake forward pass. That was third down, two to go for a first down on the 41-yard line of Duke. The score 7-6, Duke leading first period. Five minutes left to go in the first quarter. Dropping back in front formation goes Gordon Carver. Taking over the safety roll for Alabama is Harry Gilmer. Carver standing on his own 30, Gilmer on his 25. There's the pass in center, and it takes it away at the beautiful high fouling front. Floating down, that hits on the 25, takes the reverse spin to the 29, hits to the 30, to 31, and rolls dead on the 32-yard line of Alabama. Alabama's ball at that spot. The ball hits down at the 25, takes the reverse bounce on the English, swung back to the 32, and it's Alabama ball. First and 10 on their own 32. The ball 15 yards in from the west side of the field. The score 7-6. Duke leads Alabama. Alabama's backfield now. The blocking back, quarterback role, Hugh Morrow. Left halfback, Harry Gilmer. Fullback, Fred Grant. And George, right halfback, George Albright. Shifting right, Gilmer back. Gilmer takes the pass behind the line. He gets back to the 30. Spins to the 34. Before he is finally hit at the 35. And it's Gordon Carver who made the tackle. Beautiful handling of that football by Harry Gilmer, who's had an amazing record of passing this year. The gentleman that Frank Thomas, the head coach of Alabama, claims is the outstanding collegiate passer he has ever coached. Also, one of the greatest passers he has ever seen. It's his first year at Alabama. 18-year-old boy, shifting right, Gilmer back. 
Ball goes to Gilman. Gilman gives it to Grant. Grant got the way off the right side of the Duke line for four more yards to the 39 before Sink made the tackle. Brett Sink, the left guard, came in, swinging in, following from behind, pulled him down at the 39-yard line. Third down and about two to go for the first down. The ball in the 39-yard line of Alabama. 15 yards in the west side of the field. Duke leads 7-6. Touchdown makers, George Clark for Duke and Hodges for Alabama. Out of the huddle now comes Alabama. Over the ball from the far match to the center. Allen flying, shifting right. Gilmer back. Gilmer's about four steps back. Gilmer takes the pass behind the line. He's up the 40. The 45. Midfield. The 45 of Duke. The 40. And he's pulled out of the 35-yard line of Duke by Tom Davis. A beautiful, twisty, curling run on the side of the high left halfback. Harry Gilmer in his first and ten to go for Alabama on the Duke 35. Substitute coming in for Duke. Paul Stevens coming in at quarterback. That was a 26-yard run on the part of Harry Gilmer. Number 29 coming in. 28 coming in. George Clark coming back in to the Duke backfield. Lewis goes out. George Clark comes back in at left halfback. Alabama's ball on the 35-yard line of the Duke Blue Devils. Duke leads 7-6. to six. Time left to play in the first period. Three minutes and 15 seconds. Out of the huddle now comes Alabama over the ball from Juan Manger. Shifting right. Tailback spot, Harry Gilmer. The ball goes to Gilmer. Gilmer gives it to Grant. Grant drives for three yards down to the 32. Before Stevens and Jockey collaborate to take him there. Second down, seven to go for the first down on the 32-yard line of Duke. The boys from Durham, North Carolina. Two great ball clubs battling curiously out here for football supremacy. New Year's Day in the Sugar Bowl Stadium, New Orleans, Louisiana. Out of the huddle they come, up over the ball from Vaughn, match to the center. Allen flying. Bill Notre Dame shift, shifting right. Harry Gilmer back. Ball goes to Gilmer. Gilmer takes that behind the line. He's setting at the 35. He goes to the 30. And he's all the way to the 24 before he is finding stopped by Paul Stevens. I wish you could have seen that run. Three men hit him low, but he went right over their shoulders for the first down. Down to the 24-yard line. And that was Harry Gilmer, who's sparkling plenty. The two left halfbacks this afternoon with a two stars. George Brock for Duke. Harry Gilmer for Alabama. It's first and ten to go for Alabama on the 24-yard line of Duke. Two more substitutes coming in for Duke. 61 to 46. Aronoff comes back in his right guard for any goes out. Duke calls timeout, and Hyle Grazer comes swinging back in to take over the left end position for the Duke team. Score here is 7 6. Duke is leading Alabama. Duke is the first team to score as we recap the scoring plays of the first quarter. There's been plenty of excitement out here. There's been as much excitement in this game as there's been in many a pool game that we've seen several times in several years. But the way the game started, Alabama kicked off to the Duke team. They booted the ball down the field beautifully. Duke took it, rolled it back to the 33. And the first place in scrimmage, there was double handling of the ball, winding up in George Clark's arm. Clark carried the ball all the way down to the 20-yard line before he was finally stopped. And there, on a succession of fine runs on the part of George Clark, Tom Davis, and Gordon Carver, George Clark finally negotiated the last seven yards for the tally. The extra point was added by Harold Rather, and Duke led seven to nothing. Duke then kicked off to Alabama. Alabama failed to make the necessary yardage, and then they kicked back to Duke. Duke started with that football. George Clark carrying the football. Clark fumbled the ball. It was recovered by the left end, Ralph Jones, the Alabama team on the 37-yard line of the Duke team. And from there was Harry Gilmer mixing the plays up beautifully along with the fullback Hodges. Hodges finally went over from the one-yard line, smashing over after a pass and set up the score at the one-yard line, a pass from Harry Gilmer to Ralph Jones. So the extra point was missed. The extra point was missed. The score was 7-6. to six. So coming back into the lineup for Alabama, quarterback is Kyle Self, replacing Hugh Morrow. That's right back replacing George Albright and Sewell, too. Hodges, the touchdown maker of the day for the Alabama team, is in his fullback, and Harry Gilmer stays in his left pass. All right, that's the way we go as we open first and 10 of the 24 for Alabama. Shifting right. Jones is wide. The ball is given behind the line to the right halfback, Sewell. Sewell's up to 35, and he just for off as he hesitated and lost back to the 29. Tom Davis came up beautifully from the fullback position to make the tackle. That was two, two running wide on the reverse, winding up for a loss, and they say his forward progress was stopped at the 27-yard line, so that's where the loss goes. It's a three-yard loss at second down 13. The ball 15 yards up the far side of the field. The score is 7-6, Duke Lee. Out of the heavenly they come. That was the first wide reverse in front of the pass. Lewis crossed the yard. Shifting right, Gilmer back. Gilmer is taking the pass. He's trying to get that ball away. He jumps high to the air, loses his equilibrium, falls to the turf of the 43-yard line, and it's a big loss on the play. Hardison was in there, Razor were in there, both boys were in to make a tackle, neither one of them hit him. Gilmer tried to elude their grasping arm, jumped high into the air to get the ball away, and he came right down on his back. 
He'll have to hurry. He's deep in his own territory. He gets away the pass down the field. Just go to the penalty at the five. And he is a stop to the two-yard line. A beautiful jumping pass from Harry Gilbert to left end Jones. Jones knocked out of bounds by George Clark on the two-yard line of Duke. First and goal to go. What a pass that was. Gilbert threw it from his own 40-yard line. He was high to the air, so you can... That pass negotiated about 40, 55 yards in the air. First and goal to go, two yards away from the touchdown. Now, Gilmer, Hodges, and two in the backfield. Out of the run of the late jump. Up over the ball comes Vaughn Match in the center. Score, seven, six, Duke leading. Shifting right, Gilmer is back with a fullback. Hodges, the ball goes to Hodges. Hodges hits the middle of the line. He's over again! And the score is 12 to 7, Alabama leads. Hodges, the fullback, took a direct pass in center, cracked over the middle of the Duke team once more, and they lead 12 to 7. Once more up. Forward pass by Harry Gilmer sucks up the touchdown for Hodges. All four men participated in the same play. Gilmer passed to Jones to set up the first score. Gilmer passed to Jones to set up the second score. And the touchdown both times scored by Hodges. All right, Marlowe's in to try the extra point. The score is 12-7, Alabama lead. There's the pass in center. The ball is in the air. The ball is blocked. By right, left end, Harold Brazier, the score is 12 to 7, two please. Alabama will kick off. 40 seconds left to play in the first period. Alabama will kick off with the north goal at the back. Duke will receive with the south goal at there. What a football game we're having here in New Orleans, Louisiana, the home of the Sugar Bowl. And always they seem to have plenty of excitement, plenty of scoring, and two well knit, hard, well balanced ball clubs. All right, Hagerty comes in at right halfback for Duke. John Creese it comes back in at quarterback. Clark stays in at left half, and Tom Davis is in at full. The score is 12 to 7, fans. Alabama now leads. Duke scored the first touchdown. Alabama scored the second two touchdowns, both by Hodges. Gilmer, I wish you fans could see him. He's really a sight. Filippini comes in for Jack Green at right guard for Alabama. Wozniak will kick off again with Harry Gilmer holding the ball. The ball 15 yards up the east side of the field on the kickoff. The whistle blows. Wozniak approaches the ball. He's under it. It's a driving, low driving end over end kick. It's taken by Tom Davis in the 12. He's back to the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30, and he's piled up at the 35, the 36 yard line. Tom Davis rolled his way back to the 36, breaking several tackles as he was finally stopped at the 36 by Tom Whitley, the left tackle of Alabama. 30 seconds left to play in the first period. Alabama leads two by a score of 12 to 7. Both extra points are fifth part for the Alabama team, where Harold Brazier's one extra point means a great deal in this ball game at any time with three periods left to play. Out of the huddle now comes the Duke ball club, strong to the left of the single wing with George Clark in the tailback roll. Ten seconds left in the first period. 12-7 Alabama leads. The ball is passed to the fullback. He takes the pass to Clark. He cuts off the right side of the Alabama line down to the 39-yard line before Wozniak and Filippini make the tackle at that spot. Again, of three yards on the play. Second down, seven. The score is 12-7 at the end of the first period. Alabama leads. And now, Bill Ringo. The triple threat score is the answer to every coach's dream, for he can run, kick, and pass. Gillette Brushless has a trio of outstanding qualities, too, because it's speed shaving, lubricates your blade, and protects your skin. Now, we make no bones about it. Water is what softens wiry whiskers for comfortable shaving, but here's the catch. Whiskers are oily, therefore moisture-resisting. So to soak them thoroughly and do the job quickly, you should remove the oil. Gillette Brushless does that trick almost instantly. It readies your whiskers for soaking and holds plenty of water right at the shaving line where it counts most. For faster, more convenient shaves plus extra comfort, try Gillette Brushless, a quarter. This cream is free from grease, it rinses instantly, and can't clog your razor or wash bowl drain. If you like Brushless, you prefer Gillette Brushless. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to the Sugar Bowl game broadcast by the Gillette Safety Razor Company. This is the Blue Network. Continuation at the beginning of side two, after. Today, Frank Bruce of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and Zeno Edwards of Washington, North Carolina, a freshman halfback on the Duke team that's on end of the play today. Plays the same position that Carver does, the acting captain of the, Alab- of the Duke team. All right, third down, six to go for Duke. Out of the huddle comes Duke. Up over the ball comes Johnny Carter, the center. 
Short strikes from the tail back roll. The strong to the right in the single wing. Meaning the line is strong to the right side. Strike is deep. Ball is past the fullback. He's smashing as Tom Davis carrying. And Tom Davis has a first down at the 48 before Toole makes the tackle for Alabama. First and 10 to go for the Duke team in the 48-yard line of the Blue Devils. The ball 20 yards hit from the far side of the field. Alabama leading 12-7. Back in the huddle again. That was two making the tackle for Alabama at the 48-yard line of Duke. Duke's backfield, freezer quarter, clock at left half back. Davis at full and Cliff Hagerty at right half. That was Tommy Davis carrying the ball for the Duke team. All right, Johnny Crowder comes over the ball. Strong to the right in the single wing. George Clark's back. Well, it's fast to George. George is passing this time if he can get it away, but he doesn't get it away, and he's thrown at the 41 by Paul Matthew, the All-American center from Alabama. A loss in a play of seven yards, second down, 17. The ball midway between the sideline stripes. The score 12 to 7. Alabama leads Duke as we start the second period. Back in the huddle goes that Duke team. Cliff Hager, he's in there at the right half back spot now. They're looking over the defense of Alabama. Alabama using the six man line. Many times the center jumps in to make it a seven just before the ball is snapped. That's Vaughn Matthews. All right, out of the huddle now comes Duke. Up over the ball comes the center. Johnny Crowder, single wing to the right. George Clark, their star left half back in the tailback position. The touchdown makes of the day for Duke's team. Ball is past the fullback, gives it to the right half back. Hager, he's got the 35, and he's here the 34. Right, Jackson, Bill. And somebody hit Mr. McConville. Gilmer's in the safety slot, standing on his own 27. Waiting for the pass from center. There it is. It's a beautiful pass from center. The kick is away. It's a wonderful kick. Smiling down the field. Gilmer takes it on the 17. He's back to the 20. 21, 22. And he's caught up on the 22-yard line. Four men hit him. He eluded three of them, and the fourth one brought him to the turf. Hardison was the final tackler. Alabama's ball, first and 10 of their own 22. The ball 15 yards hit from the far sideline. That was a beautiful kick down the middle, sailing up into the air, cutting away through the sunshine, down to the 19, the 15-yard line, where it was raced back to the 22 by Harry Gilmer. Gilmer handling that ball beautifully for a freshman. Plenty of points. Shifting right. Gilmer back. Ball goes to Gilmer. Gilmer takes a lateral pass. Moves to the 20, the 21, 22, 25, 30, 35. And he's piled up on the 37-yard line. A beautiful play to the 37-yard line, first and 10 for Alabama. Cliff Hagerty and Fairnath made the tackle. First and 10 to go at the 37, the 42-yard line of the Alabama team now as they bring the ball in. The official Thomason races over, brings the ball in from the sideline, 15 yards, which are the rules, as you know, and an out-of-bounds play. So it's first and 10 to go now for the Alabama team in their own 42-yard line. Shifting off to the left, two in the tailback spot. The ball is given some two to Hodges. Hodges is up to 45, the 46, the 47, and he's piled up at the 47. Yard line. Hit in there by Sink and Trotter. Again in the play of five more yards. Second down, five to go. The ball in the 47 yard line of the Alabama team. 17 yards hit from this side of the field. The score, 12 to 7, Alabama lead. Alabama's backfield, Marles, Gilmer, Hodges, and two. Two's been doing some great work in there for that Alabama team as Vaughn Manchie comes over the ball. Shifting off to the left. Two is back again. Two gives the ball, takes the ball to Hodges. He's up to 45, and he's fouled up at the 49-yard line. Short of a first down as he's hit by Baronat and Clark Jones. The score here is 12 to 7. Second period. Alabama leads. 10 minutes and 25 seconds left to play in the first half. A man is injured for Duke. Time is off for Duke. Man is injured for the Duke team, and he's out down on the field. And it's fair enough, the great guard, an All-American guard, playing beautiful football today. Was heard in the last play. He's back in his feet. He's talking it up and wants to stay in. The trainer comes in from the Duke team and is assisting him from the field. Substitute comes in for Alabama. Buddy Edwards comes back in at right tackle. Green, he comes back in at right guard for Duke, replacing fair enough. Notch isn't hurt badly. He'll be back in there plenty. Billy Fields comes in for Ralph Jones at left end for Alabama. Billy Conway comes in at left guard. John Wozniak goes out. Time is still out down on the field. And during the halftime intermission, Joe Frank will have several folks up here. 
Steve Owen, the head football coach of the New York football Giants, Landon Rice, and many other outstanding men in the world of sport will be on the air during the halftime. Representatives of both Duke and Alabama's institutions will be on the air, along with other many people famous throughout the world in the world of sport. Coming in, Jack Green at right guard, Bruno Filippini goes out for Alabama. And those are the substitutions at this time as the band plays on the field, so let's pick them up. was speaking to you again. Substitute coming in for Duke. Reaching in from far across the field and it's Gordon Carver coming back in at right halfback. And going out is Cliff Hagerty. Carver comes in on defense. He's the acting captain today for Duke. Right it's Alabama's ball. Shifting right on third down. Gilmer back. Harry Gilmer has the ball. Gilmer's fading the pass. He'll have to hurry. He gets it away. It's in the air. Jones has it on the 15. He's down the line. Down the line. What a pass that was. Terrific pass. All the way down to the nine-yard line before he was finally tackled. Terrific play. Jones once more took that ball. First and goal to go for Alabama on the nine-yard line of Duke, and it was George Cross that made the tackle, and Harry Gilbert's putting on one of the finest exhibitions of passing we've ever had the good fortune of seeing, and we've seen plenty of good passing. The last ten years of broadcasting, all set, here we go, shifting right, Gilmer back. Ball goes to Harry, Harry takes it to Hodges, Harry's carrying the ball on top of the ten, and he's hit on the seven-yard line. Hit in there by Stink and Carter. Gain of two yards on the play, second down, seven to go for a touchdown. Alabama leads Duke 12 to seven. Duke was highly favored out here this afternoon. The Alabama team has been playing them here in the latter part of the first period and here in the second quarter. Off their feet. Duke got off to a great start, but Alabama's bounced back through the great passing of Harry Gilmer. The day is perfect for Gilmer's passes. Shifting right, Gilmer back. The ball is passed to Harry. Harry gets it to Hodges. Hodges is thrown at the two of the yard line on a great tackle by Harold Grather and Tom Davis. Threw him for a loss back to the 12 yard line. They're right out in front of the goal post. Substitute coming in. Delph comes back in at quarterback. Mile goes out. Delph comes back in at quarterback. Mile goes out. The ball is right in front of the goal post of Duke. Great position for a field goal attempt if they ever want to try it on fourth down. They've got another down to go before they have to go to that, however. And the ball is resting right out in front of those goal posts. Score here. 12 to 7, Alabama leads. At the end of the first half, Tulsa leads Georgia Tech 14 to nothing. And at the end of the first period, Oklahoma AM leads TCU 14 to nothing. Now, Bill Bengal. Football constantly is being refined, but the fundamentals of the game remain the same. Likewise, at shaving headquarters, improvements constantly are being made in your shaving aids, but the basic fact remains that it takes water and plenty of it to soften tough beer. That's why Gillette Lather Shaving Cream is such a thorough, fast-acting beard softener. And the favorite among millions of men who want the best-looking, most comfortable shaves they can get. This cream absorbs abundant moisture as a sponge does and releases it freely, saturating every bristle. The rich lather stays moist on your face, keeping the stubble thoroughly wet while you shave. You get cleaner, easier shaves this way and save money, too. For Gillette Shaving Cream actually produces up to four times as much lather as most other brands. Ask your dealer for Gillette Lather Shaving Cream, 25 cents. It's still time out down on the field. The teams are deployed in their defensive and offensive positions. They're getting ready to get back into play. So here again is Harry Witt. Okay, back to the ball game. The ball's in the 12-yard line of Duke in Alabama's possession. Five to the left for the Alabama team. Ball is passed to Gilmer. Gilmer's fading the pass. The ball's in the air. Completed the two yard line. Touchdown for Jones. From Gilmer to Jones for a touchdown. The score is 18 to 7. Alabama leads. Beautiful forward pass. Harry Gilmer passing right over the middle, right in behind the secondary. Perfect forward pass. Jones twice has led up the touchdowns. Once to the one yard line, the other to the two yard line. This time he steps over all alone for the carry. And this score is 18 to 7. Find the extra point. Morrow will find the extra point for the 10 yard line. Harry Gilmer will hold the ball. Ready for the pass and center. There it is. The kick is in the air. The kick is good. And the score is 19 to 7. Alabama leads the favorite Duke team with nine minutes left to go in the first half. Now the quarterback luncheon at the St. Charles Hotel the other day, the annual quarterback luncheon before the Super Bowl game, Frank Thomas, making his talk that afternoon, 
says that Harry Gilmer was the finest police attacker he had ever seen. And that Gilmer has only had one pass intercepted all year. And his maneuverability, his accurate speed, his all-around play, his good sense and poise has kept him from throwing the ball away at any time during the season. And today he's putting on a remarkable exhibition of throwing that football. And that's the reason that Alabama is out in front of Duke on a perfect football afternoon in the Sugar Bowl Stadium here in New Orleans. Substitute Lighthizer comes in at left guard for Duke. And Lloyd Heisenberg comes in at right tackle for Duke. Bosniak kicking off for Alabama. Down the middle it goes, and then over to Enfield, taken in the 12-yard line by Lewis. Lewis back to the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30, and he's hit at the 37-yard line. All right, first and 10 to go for the Duke team in the 37-yard line of the Blue Devils. 15 yards this and this side of the field. Duke's backfield, Frieza, Lewis, Davis, and Carver. Carver signals from the huddle to Cliff Lewis as he looks over the six-man line of the Alabama team. He took one seat. Jumped back into the huddle to give the play. Dives to the left now. Goes Gordon Carver. The tailback spot is Clifford Lewis, 167 pounds. The 42 yard line of the Duke team, 15 yards in from the far side of the field. The score 19 to 7, Alabama leading in the second period. Plenty of scoring, plenty of excitement as the favorite Duke team at this time is trailing the hard fighting, very maneuverable Alabama team of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Out of the huddle now comes. Comes the Duke 11. Over the ball comes Johnny Crowder, the center. Strong to the right, the single wing. Cliff Lewis from the tailback roll. Ball is passed to Clifford. Clifford's fading the throw. He's got plenty of time. He gets it away. The ball is complete. The left hand Harold Raider. Raider's all the way down to the 44-yard line of Alabama. First and 10 for Duke. Tackled by Harold Stout, the quarterback of the Alabama team. First and 10 to go. As they click on the forward pass, making up their attack for the first time this afternoon. First and 10 to go for the Duke team in the 44 and a half yard line of Alabama. The ball 15 yards just in the far side of the field. The Crimson Tide leads 19 to 7 in the second period with 8 minutes and 10 seconds left to play in the half. Out of the huddle they come now. Wide to the right is Tom Davis. Davis is wide to the right. Lewis is deep. The motion off to the right is the fullback. Right over pass to Davis at the 45. He's at midfield. He spins his way down to the 45 yard line of Alabama. The line is to meet second down 10. Hit by Tom Whitley. With a lateral pass off to the 48 yard line of Duke. And then Davis moves it down to the line of scrimmage to the 45 yard line of Alabama. So it's second down, still 10 to go. The ball resting 20 yards in from this side of the field. The score is 19 to 7 Alabama lead. Duke goes back into a huddle. Let's play the somewhat telegraphed on the play because the Alabama defense is up there very fast, realizing what was going to happen as Davis is 15 yards off to the right. Single wing back off to the left now, Lewis is deep. Chris Lewis in the tailback roll, waiting for the pass and center. Lewis is straightening up, getting ready to throw. He'll have to hurry. He's running the ball at the 50. He's down to the 45, and he's knocked out of bounds on the 42-yard line by Vaughn Mancha. Mancha coming in at just the right time for Alabama. Knocked him out on the 42-yard line. Get in the play of three yards, third down seven. Well, on the 42-yard line of the Alabama team. The Alabama line has been out charging the Duke line here this afternoon. So 19 to 7, Alabama leads in the second period. Gordon Carver looks over the defense of Alabama. Don Mancher moves out. Jeff back with Hodges. Mancher, of course, calls the defensive signals for the Alabama team. Many a time he jumps in, making it a seven-man line. They're beginning to pass, and so he's staying back into a 6 2 2 run. Out of the huddle now comes Duke. Up over the ball comes the defender, Johnny Crowder. Lewis is back, single wing to the right. 4 19 7, Alabama leads. The ball goes to Lewis. Lewis is breaking up. Lewis is passing, complete to Carver at the 35. He's down to the 32, the 40, the 25. Yard line by Hal Stout. A beautiful forward pass from Cliff Lewis to Gordon Carver from left half back to right half back. And it's first and ten to go for Duke on the 26 yard line of Alabama. Time left to play in the first half, seven minutes and ten seconds. Duke team going back in a huddle in the 48, walking out. Stevens coming in. Freezer goes out. Stevens comes in at quarterback with two instructions from the Duke bench. Paul Stevens, 182 pounds, 5 foot 11, comes from Jacksonville, Florida. The score here. 19 to 7, Alabama leads. Duke is beginning to move with that ball as they mix up their attack, running and passing. Out of the huddle now comes Duke over the ball from Johnny Potter to center. Single wing back off to the right. Cliff Lewis to tail back position. Lewis is deep, waiting for the pass to Lewis. Lewis has the ball at the 30. He's running right at the 30. He's down to the 29, the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, the 2. Beautiful 
the run it was by Cliff Lewis. You could just see a pattern with his interference. Cutting back at just the right time as he threaded his way across the chalk mark for a beautiful game, setting up a possible touchdown for Duke. And the ball now is one yard away from a touchdown. Jones comes back in at left end. Two goes out. Albright comes in at right half back. Right now, it is Duke's ball in the one-yard line. Lewis and Davis are deep. Lewis and Davis are deep. The ball is passed to Davis. Davis is over for a touchdown. Davis goes off the left side of the Alabama line, and the score is 19 to 13. Alabama leads Duke as Duke comes back to score once more. Six minutes and 55 seconds left to play in the second period. That was Tom Davis going off the left guard of Alabama for the score. Gordon Carver goes out. Lee Terry is back in at left end. Gordon Carver. Tom Davis will hold the ball. And Harry. All right, waiting for the passing center. There is the kick is in the air. The kick is no good. The score is 19 to 13. The kick was out to the right. It was high enough. It was far enough. But it wasn't straight enough. And the score is 19 to 13. Alabama leads Duke. Duke will kick off to Alabama. Alabama will receive with the South goal at their back. Alabama will receive with the South goal at their back. Duke will kick off. The Duke team comes back to put themselves right into the thick of the ball game. And what? Five touchdowns in the first half already. Jack Green comes back in at right guard for Alabama. Replacing Bruno Filippini. Filippini goes out. All right, Duke will kick off. Later goes out after trying the extra point. Reese Reese Harry's back in at left end. Frank Irwin's in at right tackle for Duke. Lee Spears is in at fullback. Ed Jockey's back in at center for Duke. And the Duke line now is Harry, Hardison, Lighthizer, Jockey, Knott, Irwin, and Jones. They're back here with Stevens, Lewis, Spears, and Clark. Spears will kick off for Duke. Fred Branson is pulled back for Alabama. Waiting for the kickoff. Go a 19 to 13 Alabama lead. The whistle blows. He approaches the ball. Spears kicks it. It's low into the ground. It rises up to 22. Picked off at the 25. Brought back to the 30. Rolling at the 35 and spun to the turf at the 36. On a nice return by George Albright, the right halfback. Frank Irwin and Bill Lighthizer made the tackle at the 36 yard line. Just over the 35 yard line, up to the 36. First and 10 for Alabama. The ball midway between the sidelines, drives to the Crimson Tide. The score 19 to 13. Alabama leads in the second period. Out of the huddle now comes Alabama. Over the ball comes Vaughn Nash in the center. South Gilmer, Grant, and Albright right in the backfield. Shifting right, Gilmer back. Gilmer takes the pass behind the line, cuts back over the middle, is piled up by Baron the right guard, Ed Jockey, the center. No gain in the play, second down, 10 to go. There was no hole left time as the Duke team converged. The guard submarine came up with the ball carrier, and it's second down, 10 to go. The ball in the 36 yard line of Alabama, midway between the sideline stripes. Six minutes and five seconds left in the first half. We're out here at the Sugar Bowl Stadium, New Orleans, Louisiana. The 11th annual Sugar Bowl Classic, the score 19 to 13. Shifting off to the right, Alabama leads. Gilmer takes the pass and set and gives it to the fullback on the play. He moves to the 41, and his Fred Grant carrying the ball before Paul Stevens is there enough to make the tackle. Third down and about five, a gain of five yards on the play. Ball up at the 41 yard line, midway between the sideline strikes. Third down, five to go. Now, Duke wants to get that ball back if they possibly can before the half end. They'd like to take over the football and try and move back in. Possibly to tie up the game and possibly to go ahead. The only thing that separates the teams now is six points. The score is 19 to 13. They battled curiously on even terms practically throughout the entire first half. A lot of the huddle comes Alabama. Over the ball comes Vaughn Nash to the center. Calling signals how itself. Shifting right, Gilmer back. He's five steps back. He's fading the pass. He's ten yards back. The ball's in the air. 16 pass. Complete to the 42 yard line to Jack McConville. Paul Stevens made the next high tackle on the play. The play was set up beautifully as they left the line stepped in for Duke, but although the pass was completed, the fine all-around play in there of the Duke line saved them from being gained down too tremendously, and it's fourth down for the Alabama team. Fourth down three. Ball in the 42-yard line of Alabama. Fading into the safety slot for the Duke team goes Clifford Lewis, standing on his own 29-yard line, and in kicking spot is Harry Gilmer for Alabama, standing on his own 31. Gilmer's back in front formation, waiting for the passing center. He's 11 yards behind the line of scrimmage, taking no chance for a block kick. The ball is in the air. It's an end over end boot, taken on the 22 by Lewis. He's back to the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40, and he tumbles to the turf at the 42. Get in there at the 42 yard line. 
Beautiful return that time. Harry Gilmer made the tackle, though, at the 42-yard line. The ball 15 yards in from the near side of the field. The score, 19-13, to 13, Alabama lead. Duke backfield, Stevens, Lewis, Spears, and Carter. Duke back in the huddle now. Paul Stevens looks over the defense of the Alabama team. Alabama still using a six-man line now as they only lead by six points. Going into a six two to one defense. Matthew steps up within two yards of that goal. Waiting for the pass in center. Single wing back off the left. The ball goes to fullback. He fumbles and recovers back to the 38-yard line. And it was Lee Spears who fumbled the ball and recovered. The tackle was made by Jack Green and Buddy Edwards. All right, back in the huddle again goes the Duke team with the loss in the play of three yards, second down, 13. The ball on the 38-yard line of the Blue Devils. Three minutes and a half left to play in the first half. Alabama leads 19 to 13. Alabama scoring twice in the first period, once in the second period. Duke scoring in the opening two minutes of the game, and then scoring just a few moments ago to bring the score up tighter. All right, Lewis is back. Wide to the right is Lee Spears. Lewis in the tailback position. Duke fighting valiantly, trying to get back to tie up the ball game. The ball is given the right halfback carve on the reverse. He's up to 40. He's up to 45, the 50 yard line, the 45 of Alabama before he is knocked out of bounds by George Albright, the right halfback. First and 10 to go for the Duke team in the 45 and a half yard line of the Alabama team, right over in front of the Duke bench. That was a beautiful switching run on the part of the right halfback, Gordon Carver. Substitute coming in for Alabama. Fighting into the field of play, reporting to the officials. 66 coming out, 58 going in. Self goes out, Maul comes in, and Self is limping as he drops off the field. Johnny Carter's back in his center for Duke. Time left to play, three minutes and six seconds in the first half. The score 19 to 13, Alabama leads, and Duke is moving for the Alabama goal. Single wing back off to the right, Lewis is back. Ball is past the cliff, Cliff is fading the pass, he's leveling, the ball is in the air. The ball is incomplete at the 40 yard line. Memphis Paul Stevens, the quarterback. Ball jumped into the air, the ball trickled off his fingertips, rolled to the turf harmlessly for an incompleted forward pass. Second down, still 10 to go. Time is out on the incompleted pass. Three minutes exactly left in the first half. Eddie Cameron sending in many substitutions. Number 75, Stevens goes out. And Bob Smith comes in at quarterback with two instructions for two. Smith, Lewis, Spears, and Conger in that backfield now. Duke is back in the huddle calling the signal. We're looking him over carefully. It's Carver calling the signal. Out of the huddle, they come up over that football, comes to center. Wide to the right is the right end. Single wing back off to the right, strong to the right, and motion off to the right is the fullback Spears. Fading the pass is Lewis. Lewis will have to hurry. He doesn't hurry fast enough. He's going for a loss back to the 47 by Vaughn Matcher and John Wozniak. And they came in there plenty fast to make that tackle. The left side of the Duke line crumbled on that particular play as the passer got no protection whatsoever. So now it's third down and about 11. A loss in the play of a yard. Back in the huddle again goes Duke. The score 19 to 13, Alabama lead. Two minutes and 30 seconds left to play in the first half. The 11th annual Sugar Bowl Classic from New Orleans, Louisiana. 73,000 roaring football fans on hand. Out of the huddle now. Comes the Duke team. Over the ball is Johnny Crowder. Strong to the right, the single wing. Johnny Lewis in the tailback position. Alabama leads 19 to 13. The ball goes to Lewis. Lewis making a pass. Getting ready to throw if he can. Get the 50, the 45, the 40, the 35. He's all the way down to the 34 yard line before he has finally stopped it. First and ten to go for Duke. He was hit by George Albright. A great run that time by Cliff Lewis. First and ten to go for Duke in the 34-yard line of Alabama. Two minutes left to play in the first half. Alabama leads 19 to 13. Alabama calling timeout. Number seven coming in. Hodges coming in at fullback for Alabama. And here's Bill Bringle. In the great shipyards and Navy repair bases along our coastlines and at Pearl Harbor, thousands of men are needed urgently to help keep our fleet from fighting trim. There's plenty of critical work for mechanics, machinists, and foundry men, for electricians, steel workers, plumbers, steam fitters, and others, in Navy yards, dry docks, supply and ammunition depots, and naval air stations. These are vital war jobs that call for able American citizens who are ready and willing to do their full part to end this war as quickly as possible. More than that, they're long-term jobs that offer full-time employment for years to come. Don't forget that workers will be needed for repairing and reconditioning America's peacetime fleet long after victory is won. If you're a mechanic, machinist, foundry man, steel worker, electrician, plumber, or steam fitter, you're needed, seriously needed at once. To qualify, you must be an American citizen and have a certificate of availability. Housing reservations will be made before you leave and free transportation supplied. Men, this is a national emergency that demands quick response. Get the facts at your nearest United States Employment Service office or see your local civil service representative right away. 
We pause ten seconds for station identification. You're listening to the Sugar Bowl game broadcast by the Gillette Safety Razor Company. This is the Blue Network. Alabama 19, Duke 13. Here again is Harry Wisner. Back to the ball game. The score, 19 to 13. Alabama leads. Duke's ball. Two minutes left to play in the first half. Duke's got a chance to take the lead before the half ends. Out of the huddle comes Duke. Potter's over that ball. Lewis is in that tailback. Rolls the single wing off to the left. Strong to the left. Lewis deep. The ball is past to Lewis. Lewis is straightening up the throw. He can't get it away. And he's thrown back to the 44-yard line by Tom Whitley. Whitley hit him right in the middle. Throw them to the turf soundly and securely. For a loss on the play as Lewis is only four or five yards deep behind the line of scrimmage. He was looking for the receiver. Didn't see Whitley coming in. Whitley coming in from his left tackle position was charging low and hard. And the right side of that Duke's line didn't even move him as he rolled across the line of scrimmage to make the tackle and throw him back to the 44. The loss on the play of plenty of yardage, 10 yards to be exact. Second down, 20. Time left to play, one minute and a half. Out of the huddle comes Duke. Over the ball comes Potter, the center. Right to the right is the... Is Harold Raver playing the right end spot on offense. The motion off to the right is Tom Davis. Fading the pass is Lewis. The ball is complete to Gordon Carver. Carver's down to the 31 yard line before he is finally tackled. Again in the play of 12 yards, third down, eight to go. Hugh Morrow made the tackle there. Time left to play one minute and ten seconds, nine seconds, eight seconds, seven seconds, six seconds, five seconds. The seconds are sinking rapidly away. There's one minute left to play in the first half. Duke is moving for the Alabama goal. Alabama leads 19 to 13. Duke scored first. Alabama scored first. Twice, three times before Duke scored again. Then Duke just scored seven minutes ago. Duke has a chance to score again. There's one minute and 40, or there's 45 seconds left to play in the first half. Single wing to the right. Lewis is deep. The ball is fast to Lewis. Lewis fumbles the ball. Davis recovers the ball. Now they might have time for one more play before the first half ends, but Lewis fumbled the pass in center. Davis moves in to recover the ball. Back to the 37-yard line. 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24. Carver is the last man back into that huddle, and Carver's calling the signals. There's only 20 seconds left. Now it's 17, 16, 15. Time for one more play, possibly, before the half ends. Alabama leads 19 to 13. Duke will have to hurry if they want to get this play started. Lewis is back. Lewis is into the air to pass if he can. He decides to run the ball. He's at the 35. He's at the 30. He stumbles at the 30-yard line. The first half will be over before another play starts to score. 19 to 13. Alabama leads. The officials are walking out into the middle of the field. They raise their arms up. The gun doesn't go off. The first half is over. Alabama leads 19 to 13 in a thrilling first half between Alabama and Duke University as the 11th annual Sugar Bowl game gets off to a roaring start. We'll be back in 15 minutes with the third and fourth period play-by-play over the Blue Network and short waves throughout the world. During the halftime, Bill Brengel will take over with some of the nation's outstanding sports writers and coaches. They'll be coming up to the booth as soon as they can get here. In the meantime, we'll take 15 minutes rest. We'll be back with you soon. There'll be plenty of excitement during the half, so stay with us. Okay, Bill. All right, Harry, and to repeat, Harry, for just a moment, at the end of the first half, the score is Alabama 19, Duke 13. And fans, if you get what I mean, the score is always in your favor when you shave the quick, easy, all Gillette way. Draw your chairs up close a minute and bend an ear while I give you the real lowdown on shaving comfort. Now, this is all you do. Prepare your beard with Gillette shaving cream, lather or brushless, and then make a clean sweep of your whiskers with a super keen Gillette blue blade in your Gillette razor. Gillette shaving cream prepares your beard thoroughly, soaks it with plenty of water, and takes the fight out of it in a hurry. Then the Gillette blue blade makes the rest of the job easy. You get the slickest shaves of your life this all Gillette way and pay no premium for the added comfort and satisfaction you enjoy. Ask for Gillette shaving cream, lather or brushless, and Gillette blue blades for utmost shaving satisfaction. And now to quickly rehash what has happened in the first half of this ball game here. You know, in six out of ten of the games that have been played thus far in the Sugar Bowl, the first team to score is lost. So it looked awfully bad. Duke was the first team to score, and then before they could score again, Alabama had a 19-7 advantage. The score is at the present time 19-13 in favor of Alabama. But it started when Wozniak kicked off to Davis, and the play started for Duke on the 33-yard line. Carver of Duke, who was a hometown boy, started the excitement by breaking away. Lowell, too, the only man left after a beautiful blocking, brought him down on the Alabama 15. 
Then Duke drove to the four, a penalty backed him up to the 14. Then Clark wanted to pass, but there was no receiver, so he ran and ran for a touchdown. And Ravens' kick was good, and it was Duke 7, Alabama nothing. Duke kicked off to Alabama. It was out of bounds, and so Alabama handled the ball for the first time from its own 35. But Bama punted and then got possession of the ball by a fumble three plays later to take over on Duke's 36. Hodges knifed down to the 20-yard line, then Alabama pounded with Hodges doing yeoman duty, and they finally went over for a touchdown. The kick was no good, and Duke still led. The count was Duke 7 and Alabama 6. Alabama's kick off to Duke sent the ball down to Alabama's 32. And then, uh, after an exchange of punts, uh, Alabama held it on its own 32-yard line, and the Crimson Tide was on its way to a second touchdown, but the hard way. Gilmer moved the ball down to the Duke 35, then the ball moved down to the 25, but penalties brought it back to the Duke 42. Gilmer, however, tossed a 55-yard pass, and Alabama started play from the Duke 2-yard line. Hodges drove over, the kick was no good, it was Alabama 12 and Duke 7. Alabama then kicked off to Duke, and the quarter ended, there was an exchange of punts, Gilmer threw a 50-yard pass then to Jones, and then after timeout, Gilmer passed the short one to Jones again, and he went over for a touchdown. The kick was good at that point, and Alabama was then leading 19-7. to Alabama kicked off to Duke, and Duke started back, and in the series highlighted by two passes, went down to the Alabama 30. Lewis swept the right end for 29 yards to move it to the Alabama 1. Davis went over. The kick was no good, and it was Alabama 19 and Duke 13. That's the way the ball game ended. Duke kicked off to Alabama after that last touchdown that I just mentioned. Albright's return of 14 yards moved it to the Alabama 36, but Alabama punted, and Lewis returned to the 17 yards, or returned it 17 yards, rather, to the Duke 42. Lewis was doing some mighty fine work for Duke, by the way, in the second quarter. The half ended with the Dukes holding the ball on the Alabama 30-yard line. The count, as we mentioned before, is Alabama 19 and Duke 13. Now, some of the folks we have with us are ready to talk with you, and we'd like to have you meet first the president of the New Orleans Midwinter Sports Association, the sponsors of this annual Sugar Bowl Classic. Here is Mr. A.B. Nicholas. Mr. Nicholas. Thanks, Bill, and Happy New Year to all you fine folks listening in. And to you, Faye... We of the Sugar Bowl are very happy to have the splendid football teams representing two such fine institutions as the University of Alabama and Duke University playing in our Sugar Bowl Classic today. We really feel highly complimented that they accepted our invitation and extend our sincere greetings to all of their alumni who are unable to be here except in spirit. It's a beautiful day. A great football game so far, and I know all of you listening in are enjoying to the fullest the play-by-play description by the nation's eight sports announcer, Harry Wismer. Our stadium is filled to capacity for the first time since Pearl Harbor, and I know all of you would be thrilled if you could only see this magnificent picture of over 25,000 servicemen and women blocked out in special sections set aside for them. At the last moment, before kickoff time, we admitted free several hundred additional servicemen who had no tickets. And now a cheery hello to my son, Sergeant Allen B. Nicholas, Jr., and to my nephew, Lieutenant Art Swift, both in the U- European War Theater. Frankie, Delora, and I all send our love, Al, and hope you're well, and only wish you could be with us to see this grand game. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Nicholas. And now we'd like to have you meet one of the representatives, or a representative, I should say, of one of the colleges here this afternoon, the president of the University of Alabama. We have with us now Dr. Raymond R. Patey. Dr. Patey. It was a privilege to join Duke in this Sugar Bowl Classic. It gave us the privilege to see many of our friends and alumni who are in this region, and also has given us the privilege of sending a greeting to the thousands of boys we have left the university and the other universities of this nation to fight on other fields and to play a grander game and into a glorious game. Coach Thomas asked me, knowing that I was coming up here to send his love and affectionate greetings to the scores and scores of boys who have played on this and other fields, and he wants to be remembered to you and give you his cordial greetings. The love of your alma mater and his high hopes are in your hands wherever you may be. And we hope that you will return frequently to the campus of the alma mater. New Year's greetings to all of you, and our affectionate love to each one of you who are bearing up under the burdens of this terrific war, and wish for you each the happiest that the year can buy. Thank you very much, Dr. Fady. 
And now, the Vice President and Dean of Duke University, Dr. William Wanamaker. Hello, friends. On behalf of Duke University, I'm happy to have this opportunity to express grateful thanks to the New Orleans Midwest Folk Association for the many generous before and during our visit here. These patriotic, unselfish gentlemen have nothing left, nothing undone that contributes in any way to our pleasure and comfort. And we are glad that our football team could meet that of the University of Alabama, whose teams have established such a remarkable reputation. Both universities owe much to that outstanding personality, Lieutenant Colonel Wallace Wade, now leading our soldiers on the bloody field of Western Europe. We are now prepared to believe the local assertion that in New Orleans, water runs uphill. For this city is a place of mysteries and enchantment. Lovely flowers and bloom outdoors here in midwinter typify the constant unaffected hospitality of these gracious people. Truly, New Orleans is a great city of proud heritage well preserved, a great beauty, gracious manners, and an unlimited future. So whatever the outcome of today's game may be, we of Duke University will always cherish the happy memories of our participation in this, the 11th Sugar Football Game. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Dr. Wanamaker. Thank you a lot. And now, for some of the sport writers that we're able to get in here in the short time that we have left for us now, we have the, the Dean of America's sport writers, Branson Rice. Randy, how are you? Well, I'll tell you, I just looked at the finest college pipes I've ever seen, and I saw Brown when he started to teach to you. That's Howard Gilmer, who is getting one of the finest exhibitions of throwing that ball to the right place in the right place. It's been a great football game, and it's going to be a little better one, I think. The world is out there to the movie. Thanks very much. Thank you, Grant and Rice, and it certainly has been plenty of football out here this afternoon. We have now the coach of the New York Giants professional football team, Steve Owen. Steve, how do you like this ball game? Well, I think it's a great ball game, and I've been interested in watching the defenses that have been used out there, and I've seen more seven-man line used today than I've seen in a long time. But those boys are really playing for keeps. And it's anybody's ball game up to the present time. They're not kidding about that, Steve. They really are working on each other, aren't they? They really are. Well, they're now flying through the air and boys running around in through the middle of everywhere. That's right. And I think Tommy has done a great job with these boys to bring him up as he has for this game. He certainly has. In particular, you being the favorite now, Alabama's well on top, 19 to 13. Well, I'll tell you, it's a great ball game, and I'm tickled to death to see it because I'm learning something myself. <laughs> so thanks a lot, Steve Owen. Now we want to have you meet one of the sport writers who's sitting in the audience here. He's the sport center tells the new audience item. Here is a member of the Sugar Bowl Committee, by the way, Fred Christie. Come in, Fred. Well, I'd like first to say Happy New Year to my son, Enzo Noel Dickey, and the same thing to Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Wade over on the front in Germany, and to Lieutenant Frank Lohey. In the South Pacific, it's a wonderful game here. If they can stop it right now, it will be a real thriller. And a wonderful crowd, great day, and a great game. Thank you very much, Fred Digby. We don't want to stop the ball game right now because we've seen so much action in the first half. I'm sure we'll see as much in the second. And now from the representing the Birmingham News, everybody in the South knows him, I'm sure. Here's just Vip Newman. Come in, Vip. Hello, old Bob. It just looks like a repetition of the Boston-Alabama game. There were no one Boston hit Alabama ahead a couple of times and tied up the floor and came back. Just off a great start and hit some the old capstone started rising back. Thank you very much, Vip. And now we have a representative from Duke here, that is the sport writing profession, from the Durham Herald, little Jack Horner. Come in, Jack. Well, I think I've seen everything here this afternoon in this 11th annual Sugar Bowl Classic. And I also believe what Frank Thomas says about his passer, Harry Gilmer, he has everything. That boy is poison out there today. However, I have a lot of confidence in this Blue Devil team, and for the benefit of those Good sports fans back up there in North Carolina. I believe Duke will come from behind in the second half. Their uh, pass defense has been a, a little left, and the tackling has been bad. But I believe they'll come back. And you think they'll shape up for the second half, huh, Jack? Thank you very much. And now from up high up in the Midwest in the Chicago Tribune, Wilfred Smith. Come in, Wilfred. I what the rest of the boys have been saying about Gilmer, but I, I noticed also that he could tackle. Of course, so far he can do everything. Front, pass, and tackle. So I vote for him first for whatever's up. He has missed on many things in this ball game, I'll tell you that. And now from the Detroit Free Press, 
Uh, it's like free press, I can't say it. It's Neil Sanders. Five touchdowns in 23 minutes. That'll be a real target for anybody. The poster has a real chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think about that. They had all the action we can expect already in just a half a ball game, haven't they? Certainly they have. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dale. We want you now to meet uh, Randy Cogman from the Wisconsin State, what is it? The uh, State Journal of Wisconsin. Madison, uh, Madison, Wisconsin. They got me all muddled up here. Come in and talk for a minute while I straighten out. Will you, Randy? I'll straighten right out here. I, I thought this girl of Alabama was quite a passer. That baby just to me just be throwing old food stamps around the window. Maybe they're driving it out there. And he looks awful good to me, and Alabama is very surprisingly stronger than I thought they were. But Duke is usually catching better. No matter who wins, we're having a nice time down here, and everything is going right up to stuff. Gilman's doing a great job in that passing, but saying you're outstanding in the defensive work. I think Duke probably looks a little tough in the ground, but I think Alabama on top of Eastern Conference represents are going to be that defensive. There's a ball out here this afternoon. That's right, Tim. And now we want you to meet Stanley Holliday. He's program director and director of special events and sports at the Blue Network outlet here in the city of New Orleans, WDSU. Stanley's been an awfully busy man during this past week, arranging for these three games uh, broadcasts that you've heard over the Blue Network. So come in, Stanley Holliday. Well, all I've got to say, Bill, is the fact that it's uh, first half is as good as, second half, rather, is as good as the first half has been. This should be one of the outstanding games that I've seen all of here in the Sugar Bowl. Thank you very much, Stanley Holliday. It's been the pleasure having you up here with us. And now we've had the bands down on the field here going through a lot of maneuvers during this 15 minutes between the first and second half. The score to remind you once again is Alabama 27, Duke 13. The Bama Million Dollar Band is down on the field now in uh, military precision drill, but let's see if we can get some of the music. It's just uh, they split the band into two halves, as it were, and swing over into five rows of uh, musicians. They walk out to the center, swing around sharply, turn to face the east ends, and as they do, the music stops abruptly. And uh, they'll probably play the alma mater over there in just a second or so. They're swinging back, going over toward the east side once again. This has been playing a ball game down here in the city of New Orleans. Duke started the scoring. Alabama then scored three times, and Duke came back to score once more, leaving the score 19-13 to 13 in favor of Alabama when the first half ended. 
The second half is going to get a, get underway in just a little while. It is a really a beautiful day. We've had a brilliant sun all day long. It's still shining now very brilliantly, and as Mr. Nicholas mentioned before, we have uh, a very colorful sight in that in addition to the uh, civilians that we have here, we have some 25,000 members of the armed services. And the khaki of the army, the blue of the navy, is well uh, uh, distributed around the stadium here. The Duke team has come out on the field now. They're going across to the opposite side. The east side has been designated, of course, as the Duke side. They've been over there all throughout the ball game. They come out of the northwest gate here, move over toward the opposite side. You know, football players are drilled by the hour in the execution of a scoring play. Now, it takes plenty of skill to make one click, and fans, that's what it takes, skill and lots of it, to turn out a truly fine razor blade, the Gillette Blue Blade. At shaving headquarters, nothing is overlooked. No facility is lacking for producing the sharpest, smoothest, finished, and easiest shaving edges on earth. In fact, heading the various departments are graduates of leading technical institutions, specialists in metallurgy, chemistry, physics, mechanics, and electricity. All this adds up to one big thing. You get the most refreshing shave, the quickest and best looking a man can have, with today's Gillette Blue Blade. What's more, you save money for this blade far outlasts ordinary blades. Occasionally, due to war condition, dealers run short of Gillette Blue Blades, but they're well worth asking for again and again. While we were talking, the Alabama team came out of the southwest gate over here, and they've come over to their west, si west side uh, benches and beginning to get themselves set there. The Bama band is still out on the field just a moment ago. They uh, formed a note of the scale. Now they're swung into an anchor. They're in an anchor formation. They're still playing music down there. Duke is on the opposite side, Alabama on this side, getting ready to get this ball game underway once again. We'll move into the second half with Alabama leading by six points, 19 to 13 is the score. The Bama band still playing down in that anchor formation just below us. They break that formation if they have, and they're forming another one. They'll be set in just a moment. It's straight rows of musicians now standing before us. They're swinging out of that and going to work into another formation. They form a big U for University and the A for Alabama. With them is the Alabama sponsor, Miss Alabama, she's known as. She's Miss, really, Miss Alice Crittenden of Long Island, New York. And now as they form the U and the A, they come off of the field, and the ball game will get underway in just a second or so. Duke's starting team has already gotten out onto the field on the opposite side, and the Alabama starting field is out on the gridiron once again. Here's a flash from the Cotton Bowl being played out in Texas. The end of the third quarter, it's Oklahoma A&M 21, TCU nothing. The Cotton Bowl game at the end of the third quarter, Oklahoma A&M 21, TCU nothing. But now we're ready to get into the second half of the Sugar Bowl game here in the city of New Orleans, being presented from the Sugar Bowl Stadium. The score is Alabama 19, Duke 13, and here's your play-by-play -play reporter, Harry Wisner. Thank you very much, Bill Brangle. Good afternoon throughout the world. Football fans are getting ready for the kickoff. Alabama kicking off with the North Coast at the back. Alabama leads 19 to 13. Wozniak approaches the ball. Another driving in over then boot down the field, taken on the nine yard line by Davis back to the 10, 15, 20, 25, 29, 30, 33, 34 yard line where he's toppled by Vaughn Mancha. Mancha came in to make the tackle in the first play of the start of the third period. And it's Duke's ball first and 10 on their own 34. Duke's backfield is Freezer, Clark, Davis, and Carver. The line is Harry at left end, Hardison at left tackle, Sink at left guard, Crowder at center, Marinotts at right guard, Frank Irwin at right tackle, and Clark Jones at right end. The Alabama line is Ralph Jones at left end, Tom Whitley at left tackle, John Wozniak at left guard, Vaughn Match at center, Jack Green at right guard, Buddy Edwards at right tackle, and Jack McConville at right end. Single wing back to the left, George Clark is deep. Clark has a ball at the 30, the 31. And he's piled up at the 32, the 33-yard line as three men miss him. I just missed him at the 30, but he managed to get to the 33 before Buddy Edwards brought him to the turf. Quite a stoop ball as they slowly go back into the huddle. It's a loss in the play of about two yards, second down 12. The ball at the 32-yard line now as they walk slowly back into that huddle with Creaser, Clark, Davis, and Carver in that Duke backfield. That Alabama line has played tremendous football all day. As Steve Owen told you during the half, he's seen the seven-man line out here more this afternoon than he's seen all season. They've used it very effectively. Out of the huddle they come now. Up over the ball comes Duke. Johnny Crowder's over that ball. Single wing back off to the right. George Clark in the tailback roll. Clark is kneeling, ready for that pass in center. The ball is passed through. Clark fakes four passes at the 30. And he's piled up at the 34-yard line. The hole wasn't there. The blocking didn't materialize. And Mancha made the tackle. Went up there at the 34-yard line. So it's third down and about 10 and a half. The ball midway between the sidelines. Strikes the score. 19 to 13. Alabama leads in the third period. 
Frieza, Clark, Davis, and Carver have the responsibility of carrying the offensive hopes of the Duke team here as we start the third period. The Alabama team talking it up plenty on defense. Back in the huddle now, jumping out. Tom Davis steps back to the 23-yard line in punt formation. Harry Gilmer is back in the 33-yard line for Alabama in the safety position for the Crimson Tide. There's the pass in center. Tom Davis gets away. The kick is partially blocked. It's on the 40, rolls to the 35. Is rolling still to the 30, the 28, the 27, the 26-yard line. It was just touched by alignment of Alabama as he came in. It spun off his fingers, didn't hit much of his hand, and rolled all the way down to the 27-yard line as it took a very good spin for the Duke kicker, Tom Davis. So it's Alabama's ball, first and 10 to go, the ball 25 yards in from the far side of the field. Score, 19-13, to 13, Alabama leads with Stark, Gilmer, Hodges, and Albright in the backfield. Out of the huddle they come. Up over the ball comes Vaughn, match to the center. They're using a balanced line. They use the same offense that the Green Bay Packers use. Shifting right. In the tailback roll is Hodges. The ball goes to Gilmer. Gilmer gives it to the right halfback Albright. Albright moves up to the 20, the 25-yard line where he's hit by Reese Harry and Tom Davis. The play was a tricky play, but it failed to fool the Duke line that time as the Duke team moved squarely across the line of scrimmage to throw him there. So back into a huddle again they go. They lost a possible half yard on the play. Second down, ten and a half. The ball 15 yards just on the far side of the field. Alabama leads 19 to 13 in the most thrilling football game we've seen in many a day. Out of the huddle they come. Over the ball comes Vaughn Match of the center. Shifting deep now in that is George Albright. Albright is kicking a quick kick. He gets it away, but it didn't fool the safety man and hit up on the 44-yard line. Rolled down the sidelines to the 37. Rolled out of bounds on that side, the eastern side of the field, right in front of the Duke bench. So it's Duke's ball, first and 10 on our own 37-yard line. The ball 15 yards in the far side of the field. The score at this time is 19 to 13, Alabama lead. All right. Duke's ball once more. Now Duke will try and move it. We're in the third period. Duke's backfield, Frieza, Clark, Davis, and Carver. We'd like to take this opportunity of paying tribute to Bill Burbank and Herb Benson for the tremendous job they did on the tickets here and getting them into the hands of the servicemen. 25,000 of them being in the stands here as guests to the fans throughout this part of the country. Finger wing back off to the left. George Clark in the tailback position. The ball goes to the fullback on the play. Tom Davis. Davis finds a hold. He spins to the 40. And he's piled up at the 41-yard line by Norwood Hodges, the fullback of Alabama. Nice moving play on the part of Tom Davis as the guards open up the hole over the middle of the Alabama line. And it's a gain on the play of exactly five yards, second down five. The ball resting on the 41-yard line of the Duke team, 15 yards just on the east side of the field, just short of the Duke bench. As the Duke boys are watching intently as Eddie Cameron, Jeff Stanley, and company are talking to their teammates along the bench. Talking it up 22 as the Duke team comes out of the huddle. Up over the ball comes Johnny Crowder, the center. Single wing back off to the left in that tailback roll is George Clark. Way off here to the left, in a good spot, waiting for a possible pass on the reverse. The ball is given to Gordon Carver. Carver cuts down to the 45, the midfield strike the 40, and is knocked out of bounds on the 42-yard line. A beautiful running play, they say. He stepped out on the 45, and it's first and 10 to go for the Duke team. First and 10 to go for the Duke team in the Alabama 45. George Albright made the tackle at that spot. Back in the huddle again goes Duke. Now the Duke running attack is beginning to function like it did in the first period. All right, back in the huddle again goes the Duke team. Out of the huddle they come. Up over the ball comes Johnny Crowder, the center. Running up in the single wing back over to the right. Strong to the right. George Clark in the tailback position. First and ten to go for the Duke team. As Duke begins to roll the ball fast to Davis. Davis scoops through for five, six, seven yards. Down to the 38-yard line. And now the momentum is beginning just as it was in the first half. George Albright came in to make the tackle there. It's a gain of seven yards on the play. Second down, three to go. The ball on the 38-yard line of Alabama. 15 yards in from the far side of the field. The score out here, fans, is 19 to 13. Alabama leads. Ten and a half minutes left to play in the third period. Duke's backfield, Frieza, Clark, Davis, and Carver. Carver, the acting captain, out of the huddle. They come up over the ball, comes to center. Single wing back to the left, strong to the left this time. In the tailback position is George Clark. We're waiting for the passing center. It goes to Tom Davis. Tom Davis struggles for the first down. Down to the 34-yard line as he spun away from two tacklers. Vaughn Mancha made the tackle at the 34. First and 10 to go for Duke. Back in the huddle, they go again. The score, 19 to 13. They're moving the six down as the headlinesman comes in. It's first and 10 to go for the Duke team in the 34-yard line of Alabama. The score, 19 to 13. Alabama lead. Alabama kicked off to Duke to start the third period. Duke moving with that ball. Back in the huddle, they go now. Looking over the defense is Gordon Carver. Alabama moves back into a 6 2 one Up over the ball, they come. Strong to the right in the single wing. George Clark in the tailback position. Alabama leads 19 to 13. We're waiting for the pass in center. It goes to Davis. Davis faces the right half. 
quarterback cuts over the middle. He's all the way down to the 23-yard line before he has finally tackled on a full center that time. He spun completely around as he faked the pass to Gordon Carver, the right halfback. Another first down as Vaughn Matcher makes another tackle. First and ten to go for Duke on the 23-yard line of Alabama. The ball midway between the sidelines strike. Alabama leads Duke 19-13. to We're in the third period. There's nine minutes left to go in this period. Out of the huddle comes Duke again. Over the ball comes Johnny Carter, the center. Single wing back off to the right. George Clark in the tailback position. George Clark wearing number 28 on his jersey again today. The ball goes to Davis. Davis cuts off to the 20, the 15, the 14, the 12 before he is finally stopped. And it's George Albright who made the tackle for Alabama. Another first down, it looks like, for the Duke team. We're waiting to see whether or not the referee calls for a measurement. I believe he's signaling for the first down. A substitute coming in for Alabama, trotting across the field. They're bringing the six out to see whether or not they made the first down. The substitute is coming in, reporting to the officials. He reports to the officials, and coming out of there is number 66. 66 comes up. And it's Marl. Goes in. For South. For the Alabama team. Another man coming out for Alabama, starting across the field. Number 32 coming out. Filippini comes back in at right guard, replacing Jack Green. Now as they resume, it's first and ten to go for the Duke team in the 12-yard line of Alabama. The ball 15 yards just from the far side of the field. I'd like to congratulate the entire senior ball group for the splendid job they've done in bringing these two fine teams into this ball game. Then like Joe Davis, Joe Cousins, Paul B. Blank, Wilbur Simpson, Hap Riley, Sam Cornswept, and many of the others, all of whom, many of them soon had sums overseas in the services, are very interested in this ball game out here today. And I know that Sam Cornswept... We're speaking to you again. Time is still out down on the field. The bands around the field are picking up the tempo in various sections of this mammoth stadium. There are over 74, 75,000 fans in here now with the 25 or 26,000 servicemen that are present with the Julian group. It's a very colorful pageantry out here this afternoon. Sparkling of red and blues flashing in the sun out here as the banners wave over the top of the stadium. All the flags, the American flag, many of the other flags flying in high over the stadium this afternoon. The colors of the various Southeastern and Southern Conference foes as well as other teams in football are flashing their brilliance in the background of this terrific stadium out here in New Orleans, Louisiana. Time is back in. The score is 19 to 13. Alabama leads. Duke has moved the ball all the way down to the 12-yard line of Alabama. First and 10 to go. In the backfield is Trees at Clark, Davis, and Carver as they come out. Up over that ball comes Johnny Clark at the center. It's a single wing back off to the left. In the tailback spot is George Clark. Everyone is on edge here in this stadium. We're waiting for the fast and center. The ball goes to Davis. Davis is at the 12, the 10, the 9, the 7. Before he is finally stopped by Vaughn Matcher. And it's Davis who's leading this drive down the field as Alabama leads 19 to 13. Davis is spearheading the drive of the Duke offense. Their variation of the water system, a single wing back with an unbalanced line. Back in the huddle again goes that Duke team. The score is 19 to 13. Alabama leads. The Duke line is now beginning to move. They're charging better than they've done any time during the ball game. They're low and they're driving and opening up holes for Tom Davis and George Clark. Single wing back off to the right. Davis is back with George. George Clark are waiting for the pass and center. It's to Davis again. Davis is out of the five, the four-yard line before he is finally stopped by Buddy Edwards. He stopped him at the four-yard line. It's third down the yard to go for the first down. They say he stopped him at the five. His right knee touched the ground at the five-yard line, and that's where they place the ball down. As soon as his knee touches the ground, the ball is automatically dead. So now there's a yard and a half to go for that first down on the five-yard line of Alabama. The ball is 20 yards in from the far side of the field. The score is 19 to 13. Alabama leads. Duke goes back into a huddle. Duke comes out of it. Up over the ball comes Johnny Carter, the center. Strong to the right in a single wing. George Clark is back with Tom Davis. The crowd is going wild out here in the stadium. The ball is passed to Davis. Davis is at the five. The four-yard line before he is finally stopped. That big Alabama line is moving in. It's very close to the first down. Vancher and Filippini was in there to make the tackle. I believe they've got a half yard to go for that first down. They're not going to measure. There's a half yard to go for that first down as Duke goes back into a huddle. The Alabama team is putting on a goal line stand. The line is digging their feet into the turf. They're talking it up along the line of scrimmage as the fullback Hodges cuts them on the back. The Alabama team is talking it up. The Duke team is talking it up. The score is 19 to 13. Alabama leads. Duke is within distance of another touchdown, which would tie it up. The extra point would put him into the lead. There's seven minutes left to go in the third period. We're in the Sugar Bowl Classic in uh, Sugar Bowl Classic in New Orleans, Louisiana. Out of it they come. Single wing back to the left. Clock is back with Tom Davis. The crowd is all standing. The pass goes from the center this time to Tom Davis. Davis has a first down on the one yard line. Davis hits over the right guard of Alabama down to the one yard line. Four downs to make one yard for Duke. Pontiac made the tackle for Alabama. 
All right, four downs to make one yard. It's Tom Davis smashing, cutting, squirting his way through that Alabama line. Alabama leads 19 to 13. Duke putting on a driving drive for that touchdown if they can get it. Duke backfield is three at clock. Davis and Carter. Alabama leads 19 to 13. Six minutes and 20 seconds left to play in the third period. Duke goes back into the huddle. Carter falls the signal. Out of it they come. Up over the ball comes Johnny Carter, the center. It's strong to the right in the single wing. Davis and Clark are back. We're waiting for the pass in center. The ball goes to Davis. There it is. Hot shot of the goal line, I believe. It's just shot of the last white mark is Bruno. Filipini and Buddy Edwards make the tackle a half yard away from the goal. So it's second down, a half yard to go for a touchdown. Alabama still maintains their six-point narrow margin lead. Duke goes back into that huddle slowly. Gordon Carver looks over the Alabama defense. Alabama using a seven-man line along the line of scrimmage. Back up against their own goal line. The linemen are lining up right on the chalk marks of the goal line. Duke is coming out with their blue numbers and their flashing white helmets and the sun sparkling out here as they come out. Single wing back off to the right. Clark and Davis back. It's second down. The ball goes to Davis. Davis is over for a touchdown and a score is tied. 19 to 19. Five minutes and a half left to play in the third period. Tom Davis will have the left guard and tackle of the Alabama forward ball. Slashed his way through to the tally and the score is all tied up. 19 to 19 in the Sugar Bowl Stadium in New Orleans, Louisiana. Harold Rader comes in to try the extra point for Duke. Raider just came into the lineup of the Duke team. Now, this is the very important extra point. We mentioned how important the extra point would be in the first period when Alabama missed two. And now Duke has a chance. The score is 19 to 19. Raider will try the extra point. Harold Raider, 167 pounds in Cleveland, Ohio. And now they're kneeling and holding that ball at the 10 yard line. The pass and center comes up. There's the pass. The kick is in the air. The kick is good. And Duke leads 20 to 19. Raider's extra point slipped the upright for a perfect placement. And the Duke team once more takes the lead after having been behind since midway in the first period. Duke leads Alabama in the Sugar Bowl, 20 to 19 in the third period, with five and a half minutes left to go in this quarter. Plenty of excitement in the Sugar Bowl once more this year. The game last year, the final score, Georgia Tech 20, Delta 18, and in this game, deep in the third period, the score is 20 to 19, Alabama trailing Duke University. What a football game we're having out here this afternoon before this tremendous audience on a perfect football afternoon. Duke will kick off. 40 yard line, Duke will kick off to the South Bowl at their back. Alabama receiving with the North Bowl at their back. Max McCornack, manning the controls for the Blue Network this afternoon, assisted by Charlie Whitney at WDSU Buddy Weber Station here in New Orleans, Louisiana. Getting ready for the kickoff now. There it is, coming up. It's a low one down the field. It's down to the 20, rolls out of bounds on the 15 yard line. Alabama's ball, first and 10 on their own 35. Now, of course, the passing play of Harry Gilmore will probably come back into prominence again because Duke has once more taken the lead away from Alabama. After Duke got an early lead in the first quarter, Alabama took it away from him and Gilmore's great passing in the first period, leading 4-7 at the end of the first quarter. The end of the first half, the score was 19-13. to We're deep in the third period, and now the score is 20-19. to Duke leads Alabama. It's first and ten to go now for the Alabama Crimson Tide on their own 35-yard line, the ball midway between the sideline stripes. It's Miles, Gilmer, Hodges, and two in the Alabama backfield as they come out. Shifting right, Harry Gilmer back. Ball is given in there to Lowell, two. Two smashes over the middle up to the 37-yard line before Paul Stevens and Ed Perini come in to make the tackle there. Again in a play of two yards, second down, eight to go. The ball midway between the sideline strikes of Alabama. The score here, 20 to 19, Duke leading. Five minutes left to play in this, the third period. Back in the huddle again they go. Out of it they come. Ron matches over the ball. It's that full Notre Dame shift. Very effective. Shifting right. Gilmer's nine yards behind the line of scrimmage. Gilmer is quick kicking. He gets away and then over end boots and hits on the 35 and goes out on the 33-yard line. A quick kick goes out of bounds on the 33-yard line of the Duke team, giving possession of the ball back to the Duke 11 on their own 33-yard line. 15 yards up from the far side of the field. The Duke backfield, Stevens, Clark, Spears, and Hagerty now. Their line is Harry, Hardison, Lighthizer, Shockey, Perini, Eisenberg, and Jones. The Alabama line is Jones, Whitley, Wozniak, Mancha, Filippini, Edwards, and McConville. Their backfield is Marl, Gilmer, Hodges, and Albright. That's the way the center is at this time. The score here is 20 to 19, Duke Lee. Time is out down on the field. Ed Wilhelm is handling his duties beautifully up here, representing the Gillette Company and the Blue Maxim Agency. And Tommy Vallada of the News and Special Features Department of the Blue Network is also on hand with us here as Bill Bringle moves to the microphone. You know it's difficult for the unpracticed eye to see the details of even a simple play. By the same token, unless you're an expert, all double-edged razor blades may look about the same to you. But man alive, what a difference there is when you try them out on tough beards. Now take today's Gillette Blue Blade, for example. 
No matter how wiry your whiskers may be, this blade will finish them off quicker and easier than any other blade you can name. That's because the Gillette Blue Blade has the keenest, smoothest finished edges ever produced. So keen, so beautifully finished, in fact, that shaving's no trick at all. Here's something else to think about. The edges of today's Gillette Blue Blade are actually hard enough to cut glass. That means this blade stays sharp and easy shaving far longer than other blades and saves you money. It's mighty simple to check me. Ask your dealer for Gillette Blue Blade and enjoy real shaving comfort and economy. All right, Harry, with you. Okay, back to the ball game. The score, 20 to 19. Duke leads. Duke ball first and 10 on their own, 33. Out of the huddle they come. Single wing back off to the left. George Clark in the tail back position. The ball is back to the fullback, Davis, who's been making all the yardage. He cuts up to the 35. He's all the way to the 38 before he is finally stopped. Going off the right tackle of Alabama. George Albright made the tackle for the Alabama team. Final score, Tulsa 26, Georgia Tech 12. Final score in the Cotton Bowl, Oklahoma 34, TCU nothing. Those are the final scores of the other bowl games played thus far this afternoon. Out of the huddle now comes Duke. Up over the ball comes to the center, Ed Chucky. Single wing back off to the right. George Clark back. Second down, five to go. A gain of five yards on the last play. The ball goes to Clark. Back to the 35, the 40, the 45. And he's fired up from behind in the 49-yard line as the Alabama forward wall is pushed aside by the fast-moving Duke line. First and ten to go now for Duke on their own 49-yard line. The ball 15 yards hit from the far side of the field. The score, 20 to 19. Duke leads. Time left to play in the third period, four minutes. Duke goes slowly back into the huddle. Alabama's fighting furiously. Duke is blocking violently and viciously, doing a tremendous job of cutting across that line of scrimmage. Up over the ball comes Dead Shockey. The center is strong to the right in a single wing. It's first and ten to go for the Duke 11. George Clark is back. The ball goes to Davis, the fullback. Davis is piled up after a yard advance down to the midfield strike. Where he's hit by Philippine and Buddy Edwards of the Alabama Crimson side front line. Second down, nine to go. The ball 15 yards hit from the far side of the field. Back into the huddle again goes Duke. Eddie Cameron's team has come back here in the third period. They outplayed the Alabama team thus far, taking the edge away from them. Alabama outplayed Duke from the first five minutes on through the entire first half. But now Duke has taken over, and they're moving with that football. And that's the way the game was seesawed back and forth. The score is 20 to 19. The ball goes to Clark. There's a fumble. He recovers back to his own 47. Clark fumbled the ball. It bounced off the shoulder of Tom Davis. The pass and center was a little wild. Bounced off Davis' shoulder. It was meant for Clark. They were only a step apart in that tailback roll. And Clark fell on the ball immediately to recover it for a loss back to the 47-yard line. So it's third down and about 12 to go for the first down as the substitute comes in for Duke. And it's Johnny Carter coming back in, replacing Ed Shockey. Shockey being taken out after the last play. Johnny Carter taking over the pivot post for the Duke team. So out here, 20 to 19. Duke is leading. This has been a very thrilling football game from the opening gun. And I'm sure it'll be uh, that way right up until the final whistle, number 32, warming up for Alabama. Several of the nation's sports writers that you didn't hear up here during the half are Jake Wade from the Charlotte, North Carolina Observer, Bob Phillips of Birmingham, Alabama, Frank Spencer of Winston-Salem, Bill Keith, Buddy Russell, Harry Martinez, Raymond Johnson of the Nashville Tennessee, Buddy Russell of the Nashville Banner, Earl Luby of the Louisville Cur- Courier Journal, and many others are out here covering the ball game, along with the folks that you heard during halftime. The band is picking up the Temple Watts while left. The excitement is running rampant through the stand. This crowd has one chance to relax throughout this entire ball game. The score here, as you know, at this time is 20 to 19. Duke is out in front. Now, Alabama has a chance to regain possession of that ball should the Duke team fail to make the necessary yardage on the next two plays. The ball's resting on the 47 yard line of Duke, and it's third down and 12 to go for the first down. Everyone in the stands is standing. The Duke team is still in their huddle, calling timeout. The Duke team is ready to play. The officials have done a tremendous job out here handling this ball game today. Say, okay, boys, back to the ball game, and here we go. So Duke with Stevens, Clark, Spears, and Carver in their backfield, and Johnny Carter back into the pivot post is ready to go on third down 12 as they lead 20 to 19 in the third period with three minutes and five seconds left to go in this period. Out of the huddle they come now, single wing back off to the right, George Clark in the tailback position. Ball is passed to Tom Davis, Davis gives it the right half back on the reverse, and he's thrown at the line of scrimmage on a great tackle by John Wozniak. That was Davis to Carver on the reverse that time. Failed again in his fourth down. Fourth down as Duke goes back into a huddle, and now Duke will be forced to kick. Very seldom does that Duke team handle that ball on third down without kicking, but they felt they'd like to solve as much time as they possibly could here in the third period before getting away with that boot. But there's two and a half minutes left to play now in the third period. It's back in front formation goes Tom 
Now Jordan Travis going to do the fronting on this particular play as Tom Davis is out of there. Travis standing back in the 37. It's a two-step kick. It's high into the air, off to the right, down the sideline. We're waiting for it to bounce. It bounces out of bounds on the 31-yard line. Bounce out of bounds in the 31-yard line, far across the field, and it's Alabama's ball once more along the eastern sideline. Alabama's ball, first and 10 on the own 31-yard line, and now Alabama takes over with two minutes and 20 seconds left to play in this, the third period. Morrow, Gilmer, Hodges, and Albright in that backfield of Alabama. Duke leads 20 to 19, and now Alabama will attempt to regain the lead that they lost just about five minutes ago. All right, out of bounds, they come over the ball from Vaughn Matcher, shifting right. George Albright back. The ball is given to Hodges. The ball is fumbled. There's a big pile up for it at the third 27 yard line. We'll see who recovered it. This is very important. Double handling of the ball created a fumble, and it looks like Duke recovered the ball. Duke did recover it and getting up off the pile. We're waiting for his number as he gets up. He's stretching, and it's number 76, 75. Paul Stevens, the quarterback, recovered the fumble for Duke on the 27-yard line of Alabama. So now it's first and 10 to go for the Duke team on the Alabama 27. That was a tough break for Alabama, a good break for Duke. And now Duke is in scoring position. This ball is 20 to 19. Alabama trails Duke. Out of the huddle comes Duke. Over the ball comes the center, Johnny Crowder. Single wing back off to the left. George Clark is deep. The ball goes to fullback on the play. He's diving over the line, but not so far as he sit at the 23. And it's Wozniak and Matthew who made the tackle of Lee Spears. Second down, eight to go. The ball on the 23 yard line of Alabama. Midway between the sidelines, strike. Duke leads 20 to 19. Duke goes back into that huddle. Alabama leads 20. Alabama trails 20 to 19. Duke is trying to get another touchdown if they possibly can. Alabama can score them fast with the passing of Harry Gilmer. They scored 20 in the first period twice, once in the second period once. And now here in the third period, Duke has their touchdown. Let's put them out in front with the extra point. Finger wing back off to the right. Clark is back. And motion off to the right is Spears, the fullback. Clark is taking the forward pass, cutting off for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten yards all the way down to the 11-yard line before he is finally stopped by George Albright. Taking a forward pass all the way as the Alabama line loosened up on the play, waiting for the pass to be completed, and then he ran with the ball nicely as he kept beautifully off the left side of the Alabama line. First down, 10 to go for another first down, 11 to go for a touchdown. Duke is coming in, trying to get eight points ahead if they can, or at least seven points ahead. Duke is back in the huddle, calling signals Gordon Carter, the acting captain of the team. Out of the huddle, they come over the ball, comes Johnny Carter to center, single wing back off to the back. George Clark is deep. Clark is playing a great ball game. Spears is in motion off to the left. Clark is taking it back to him. He's at the 12 yard line. Great thrown by Vaughn Matchaby, center of Alabama, for a loss in the play of a yard. It's second down, 11 to go for a first down. 12 to go for a touchdown. The ball right out in front of the goal post. The score is 20 to 19. Duke leads. 10 seconds left to play in the third period. 9 seconds, 8 seconds, 7 seconds, 6 seconds, 5 seconds. The next seconds are ticking away. 3, 2, 1 second left. The third period is over. The third period is over. The score is 20 to 19. Alabama trails Duke and his goal bringer. Speed is the thing that makes modern football a spectacular game it is. And fan speed, extra shaving speed is what makes Gillette Brushless the favorite with millions of men. Continuation at the beginning of side four after a short delay. Back now, Tom Davis is in the throw back for Duke. Davis is motion off to the right. Lewis is making a forward pass. Now he's going one left for Davis. Oh, a touchdown! I believe. No, the official said he stepped over the end zone as he caught it. We were watching him carefully. It was nip and tuck as he hit the chalk mark, and the official on the play said it was no touchdown. There was one that was very, very close, and the official was right there, only two yards away from the receiver. The way these boys have handled this game today is amazing. They were right on that particular play. He caught the ball in the end zone, five yards deep. He was on the sideline of the end zone. He caught the ball. He was in the air when he caught it, and apparently his foot was over the chalk mark, and the pass was out. So it doesn't go as a completed pass, but it was that close. That shows you how close Duke came to scoring another touchdown. We're starting the fourth period. Duke is leading 20 to 19. Duke comes out of the huddle. Up over it they come. Single wing back on him over to the right with their passer, Cliff Lewis, the tailback position. Tom Davis again in motion off to the right. The same play. This time he's taking the pass. He's at the 11. And he's piled up at the 12 yard line on a beautiful tackle by Hodges, the fullback of Alabama. Hodges came in there strong. He was low. And he came in to make the tackle. And he really made it. That's the 12 yard line, the minus to me. So now, this is fourth down coming up for the Duke team in the 12-yard line of Alabama. The ball 15 yards in the near side of the field. The score, 20 to 19, Duke leads. Duke goes back slowly into that huddle. Their line is Harry at left end, Hardison at left tackle, Lightheiser at left guard, Johnny Crowder at center, Ed Perini at right guard, Eisenberg at right tackle, and Jones at right end. Frieza, Lewis, Davis, and Carver in the backfield as they come out. 
Now, this is a very important play. There's 14 minutes left to play in this ball game. Single wing back off to the left. Lewis is deep. Lewis is fading to pass. He's got lots of time. He passes complete. And the receiver funnels the ball across up into the air and is caught again by a left tackle, Hardison. But the ball goes over to Alabama. The ball goes over to Alabama. And it was George Albright who was in there to make the tackle. Alabama put on a terrific goal line stand to stop the movement of the Duke 11. Substitute coming in for Duke. The official, the referee, Thomason, coming over there, grabs that football, places it down on the turf. That's the 14-yard line of the Alabama team, 15 yards in from this side of the field. First and 10 to go for the Crimson Tide. Alabama's back here. Right there. Jones, Tom Whitley, John Wojciech, Vaughn Matcher, Bruno Philippe, Buddy Edwards, and Jack McConville in on the front line. Now the ball is placed back to the 12-yard line after a consultation by the officials. The ball is given to Hodges on the reverse. Hodges is hit at the line of scrimmage by John Creaser and Clark Jones, the right end of Duke. Clark Jones and Ralph Jones are no relations, but they both play in the flank positions for both ball clubs. All right, second down, 10 to go. That was Hodges carrying the ball. It was a high pass from center. He juggled the ball. It looked like he might fumble it before he was tackled, but he managed to hold on to it. It's out of the huddle again comes the Alabama team. Shifting off to the left. Harry Gilmer back. Gilmer fakes it back behind the line. He breaks up to the 12-yard line, the line of scrimmage, and he's hit hard by Ed Sharkey and Tom Davis with Gordon Carver coming in. And the Duke team is now playing inspired football as they're stopping the running attack of the Alabama backfield. While the Alabama linemen are unable to negotiate any holes for their backs to fall through. Follow through. Back in the huddle again goes the Alabama team. Third down, 10 to go. The ball on the Alabama 12-yard line. Stopping back in front formation goes Harry Gilmer, starting on his own goal line. The Duke team spreads, and the tailback spot is Cliff Lewis on defense. Gilmer standing right on his own goal line. Will he pass or will he kick? He's going to kick. He gets the kick away. It's a nice kick. And Lewis blocks it on the 45, picks it up on his own 47, rolls it back to midfield, cuts down to the 45-yard line of Alabama, and is piled up on the 44-yard line of Alabama, and he's hit by Jack McConville, the right end of Alabama. So it's first and 10 to go now for Duke in the 44 Alabama line. 15 yards hit from the far side of the field. Duke leads 20 to 19 in the fourth period with 12 and a half minutes left to play in the ball game. George Montney, several other folks out at the ball game today. We see Albert Wackenheim, the head of the radio committee of the Sugar Bowl, who's done such a splendid job in all the years he's handled the radio for this bowl. Out of the huddle again, they come up over the ball, comes the Duke 11 with Ed Sharkey leading the way in the pivot post. Single wing back to the right, Cliff Lewis is deep. Lewis is ready, waiting for the pass and center. The ball goes to Lewis. Lewis gives it to Davis. Davis smashes over to the 42, where he's found up at that spot by Tom Whitley. Second down, eight to go. The Duke team taking no chances on fumbling that football, walking slowly back into a huddle. The score here. 20 to 19. The Alabama team fails Duke. Duke scored their touchdown, and it was Harold Rayther's extra point that put the Duke team out in front. They've been more successful on the extra points today, and that's the only reason they're out in front at this time. You can see how close this ball game is. There's plenty of time for either side to score before the ball game is over. Out of the huddle comes Duke. Over the ball comes Sharkey. Single wing to the right. Cliff Lewis is back. The line of Duke is strong to the right. Now they move into a five-iron line and fading the pass is Lewis. Lewis is passing the ball into the flat. Complete on a great catch by Carver. Carver's given the 35-yard line by Hodges. That was a great catch by Carver that time. Carver jumped high into the air to bring the ball to the turf. He was set as he caught the ball at the 35-yard line. Just short of a first down. Third down, a yard to go for the first down as Duke goes back into a huddle. Back into a huddle they go with third down, a yard to go. About 15 yards in the near side of the field. The score 20 to 19, Duke leading. That was a pretty pass from Cliff Lewis, but a better catch by Gordon Carter. Left half back to right half back on the play, setting him up for a possible first down as they come out of the huddle. Up over the ball comes Ed Shockey to center, single wing back off to the left with Cliff Lewis deep. Alabama fighting furiously, battling with every play. The ball is tossed to the fullback, Tom Davis. Davis has a first down as he flies off the right side of the Alabama line down to the 31. And it's Buddy Edwards who made the tackle there. So it's first and 10 to go now for Duke on the 31-yard line of Alabama. The ball right out in front of the goal post of this fighting Crimson Tide. Duke is moving with that football. They're holding on to it as long as they can. Ten and a half minutes left to play in the game. Duke leads 20 to 19. We're in the 11th annual Sugar Bowl Classic at New Orleans, Louisiana, the home of the Sugar Bowl. It's been a perfect day. There hasn't been a cloud in the sky. Out of the huddle, they come up with the ball. Comes Ed Shockey to center. Drawn to the right in the single wing. And the tailback row, Cliff Lewis. Lewis is deep with Tom Davis. Davis in motion off to the right. Lewis is fading the pass. He takes the forward pass, and he's pulled out from behind. Pulled out from behind at the 30-yard line. And a nice tackle by Buddy Edwards and Jack McConville, who followed him around. But now they walk slowly back into that huddle again. The score here is 20-19. Duke leads Alabama. Ten minutes left to play in the game. This is been a furious 
Hard fought football game from the opening gun. It's lead is seesawed back and forth. Harry Gilmer has been bottled up here in the third and fourth period, but his team hasn't been in a position on the field to take a chance. If they get the ball again, of course, they'll open up a passing barrage. Back in the huddle again goes Duke out of the big time. Up over the ball comes Ed Shockey. Single wing back off to the right. Cliff Lewis in the tailback spot with Tom Davis, the fullback. Duke leads 2019, fourth period, 10 minutes left. The ball is passed to Lewis. Lewis turning the pass. He's got plenty of time. The ball's in the air. Intercepted. And brought back to the 20, the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40, the 45, the 35, the 25, the 20. Here comes the pass and center. The kick is in the air. The kick is good. And Royal scored all seven points. The score is 26 to 20. Alabama leads Duke in the Sugar Bowl. On a 75-yard pass interception run. And the blocking following and up in front of the ball carrier was beautiful to behold. Frank Thomas's team blocked with tremendous precision as they rolled across yard line after yard line. Moving across the field in the perfect rhythm. All right, Alabama will kick off. Alabama kicking off with the top goal at the back. Duke kicking, receiving with the north goal at there. Alabama now the 26 to 20 in the fourth period with nine and a half minutes left to play in this ball game. Nine and a half minutes left. Substitute warming up for Alabama. Frank Thomas has the boy on the back. He's coming in and his number is 16. Number 16 reporting in for the officials. Well, Steve Owen, Danny Rice, and many of us were talking football in the score the other day, and they said, wouldn't surprise me to see that Alabama team put on one of the most thrilling football games of the season. Frank Thomas is noted for thrilling surprises. And Frank Thomas, according to that conversation, hasn't let them down this afternoon. And Billy Fields comes in. Billy Fields comes in at left end for Alabama. Time is out on the field, and here is Bill Brangle. This cavalcade of sports broadcast of the Sugar Bowl game is being heard throughout the world. That sentence, fellow Americans, as the radio monitors queued to delete for obvious reasons the following emergency bulletin from the shortwave broadcast going to our troops overseas. I cannot tell you how many workers are urgently needed in shipyards and Navy repair bases here and at Pearl Harbor. But I can assure you that thousands of mechanics, machinists, foundry men, electricians, steel workers, steam fitters, and others are desperately needed at once. Yes, and they're critically needed in Navy yards, dry docks, supply and ammunition depots, and naval air stations as well. If you're willing to go to Pearl Harbor, to the Pacific Coast, the East Coast, or come to the Gulf Coast, and take a hand in maintaining and supplying the ships and planes of the fight in this Navy afloat, listen carefully. Skilled and unskilled workers, who are American citizens with certificates of availability, have a real opportunity to benefit their country and themselves as well. For well, these vital war jobs will last for years after the peace is won. Here's your chance to put your skill to work where it counts most. Get the facts at your nearest U.S. Employment Service office or your local civil service representative right away. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to the Sugar Bowl game broadcast by the Gillette Safety Razor Company. This is the Blue Network. Alabama getting ready to kick off. Harry Wisner back to the microphone. Alabama will kick off. Wozniak will kick off the left guard. Waiting for the whistle. Here he comes. He approaches the ball. He's under it. They missed the ball, and it was picked up by the man holding the ball. Gilmer, Gilmer ran it up to the 45-yard line. We'll wait for the officials on that one. That was a very peculiar play, and we're waiting now to find out. They'll probably give an offside penalty on the kickoff. Take the ball back to the 35-yard line, and they'll have to kick from there. Five-yard penalty takes the ball back to the Alabama 35-yard line. Alabama will kick off at that spot. Now Fields is in there to kick off. Fields is in there at left end, and he will kick off this time. Fields is kneeling. Fields is ready. He's approaching the ball. 
This time he hits it. It's an end over end boot down the field. It's taken on the 25 yard line by Stevens. The quarterback is back to the 35, the 40, the 45, the 46, and Duke has the ball on their own 46 yard line. First and 10 to go. Field kicked down to the 46 yard line. Kicked down to the 35 yard line where it was taken and brought back to the 46 by Stevens, number 75. So now it's first and 10 to go for the Duke Blue Devils on their own 46 yard line with nine minutes left. They go slowly back into a huddle. Stevens, George Clark, Tom Davis, and Gordon Carver in that backfield as they come out over the ball. Johnny Crowder's over the football. It's a single wing back off to the left. And it's Gordon Clark that's steep. Now this Duke team will try. They're starting 26 to nothing, and the Duke team will start moving. Tom Davis takes the pass in center. Tom Davis spins down to the 49-yard line for a three-yard advance, going right over the middle to the Alabama line before Bruno Filippini and Vaughn Matcha collaborated to make the tackle at the 49. So it's second down, seven to go. The ball 15 yards just the near sideline. Right out in front of our microphone. Right out here, the Blue Network microphone cutting right across the ball. It's back into a huddle again, goes the Blue. There goes the Blue Devils of Duke. All right, the score here, 26 to 20. Alabama leads. Out of the huddle comes Duke. Over the ball comes the center. Single wing back off to the left is George Clark. Johnny Carter centering the ball for the Duke team. It's second down, seven. The ball is past the fullback, Davis. Davis gives it to Clark. Clark is up to 49, and he's still going all the way down to the 45-yard line of Alabama before he is finally stopped by George Albright. On a fine run as he follows his interference perfectly off the right side of the Alabama team. It's third down, a half yard to go for the first down, the ball on the 45-yard line of Alabama. Eight minutes left to play in the game. Alabama leads Duke 26 to 20. Duke is moving for the Alabama goal. The game is beat out back and forth from the opening gun. This has been one of the Frank Murray World Games of history is out of a huddle they come. Up over the ball comes the center. Single wing back off to the right. George Clark is back with Tom Davis. It's third down, a half yard to go for the first down. Davis straightens up. Now he's back. He's ready. He's in position. He takes the pass and center. He is spinning. It's going to be very close, but I believe he made it as he goes down to the 44-yard line. Vaughn Massey came in to make the tackle for Alabama. They're on fouling. It looks like you the first down. They may have to measure. The referee is going to call the boys in, I believe. It'll be an official timeout on this particular play. Alabama coming back in also. So it's first and ten to go for Duke on the 44-yard line. And it is John Wozniak coming back in at left guard. Single wing back off to the right. George Clark in the tail back position for the Duke team. Ball goes to fullback Davis. Davis gives it the right half back. LaRue. LaRue's at the 45, the 40, the 35, the 30, the 26-yard line. We well, knocked out of bounds. Jim LaRue, number 27, now in at right half back for Gordon Carver. Races for the first down for Duke. Down to the 27-yard line of Alabama. The ball 15 yards up the far sideline, and it was Harry Gilmer who made the shot tackle at the sideline. Seven minutes left to play in the game. Alabama leads Duke 26 to 20 on mile 75 yards touchdown run. And now Duke is moving for that Alabama goal line. Out of the huddle comes the Duke team with Stevens, Clark, Davis, and LaRue in the backfield. Single wing back off to the right. Clark is back. The ball goes to George Clark. He made a great catch of a slow pass. He's at the 26. He's down to the 21 as he carries four men on his back all the way to the 20-yard line. Again in the play of six yards. And it was Tom Whitley who made the tackle for Alabama. The ball's on the 20-yard line of the Alabama team. They place the ball back on the 20 and a half yard line. 17 yards up the near side of the field. Off to our right. The score here is 26 to 20. Alabama leads. Alabama calling timeout. With the score, 26 to nothing, Alabama. 26 to 20, Alabama leading Duke. And Duke moving as Bill Brengel moves to the microphone. Old timers remember the days of the flying wedge, God's back, three downs in which to make five yards. Well, brother, a lot has happened in the shaving league, too, since those days. And the most recent, also one of the most important developments, is Gillette Lather Shaving Cream. You know it's water, water and plenty of it, that softens tough whiskers for quick, easy shaving. So Gillette chemists set out to develop a shaving cream that would produce a sponge-like lather. By that, I mean a lather that holds abundant moisture and releases it freely. And men, that's exactly what Gillette Lather Shaving Cream does. It whips up lather that not only stays wet on your face, but keeps your stubble thoroughly saturated while you're shaving. See for yourself what this means in extra shaving comfort and luxury. Ask your dealer for Gillette Lather Shaving Cream, 25 cents. Frankly, it produces up to four times as much lather as most other brands and saves you plenty of money. Time out down on the field here. The score is Alabama 26 and Duke 20. The ball game is in the last quarter, and we have just about six minutes and some 20 seconds remaining to be played in the game. This has been a thrilling ball game. 73,000 fans here have seen more than their share of excitement and entertainment in any one football game. They have been forced to their feet many times during the afternoon with the exciting plays that have been run by both sides, both Duke and Alabama. And you never know when one, of the, one team is going to score or the other. It's real exciting. 
Fans are making plenty of noise throughout the stadium, and the fans are overshadowing that. But the teams are ready to get back into action. Duke is back in the huddle here again as Harry Wisner. Okay, back to the ball game. Duke ball, second down, five and a half to go for the first down on the 20 and a half yard line of Alabama. Stevens, Clark, Davis, and LaRue in the backfield. The ball goes to Davis. Davis is up to 20. He's down to the 18, the 17 yard line. Just short of a first down as he hits hit by Wozniak and Mancha. Wozniak and Mancha take him at the 17 yard line. The ball 15 yards up the near side of the field. Back in the huddle goes the Duke team. Third down and about a yard to go for the first down. 17 yards to go for the touchdown. Back in the huddle, they go. Six minutes left to play in the game. Alabama leads 26 to 20. Duke is moving for that Alabama goal line. They're going to try and tie that ball game up and go ahead if they can. Out of the huddle comes Duke. Over the ball comes Johnny Cloud of the center. Single wing back off to the right. George Clark in the tailback roll with Tom Davis. We're waiting for the pass in center. The ball is passed to Tom Davis. Davis is moving. He's up the 10. Just go to the 10 now. Down to the 9 for a first down. Tom Davis threaded his way beautifully through there. He found the hole. It looked like he'd be stopped at the 15, but he cut back beautifully, rolled to the 12, and then spun away from two tacklers, hit at the 10, and fell to the 9-yard line for the first down goal to goal for the Duke team. Nine yards away from a touchdown. The score is 26 to 20 Alabama lead. The time left to play in the ball game, five minutes and 20 seconds. The game is seesawed back and forth if you follow this this afternoon all the way. Now, here's the picture. Five minutes now left to take him out of the huddle. Single wing back off to the right. George Clark is back. Four, four downs to go, nine yards. The ball goes to Davis. Davis juggles the ball, picks it up, and runs to the six-yard line before he is finally tackled by Tom Whitley. Looked like Davis would lose control of the football, but he caught it right off his bootstraps as he moved down to the six-yard line. Second down, six to go for a touchdown. The ball 15 yards just from the near side of the field. The score, 26 to 20, Alabama leads. Duke goes back into a huddle. Duke has Stevens, Clark, Davis, and LaRue in the backfield. Razor, Hardison, Sink, Crowder, Knott, Eisenberg, and Jones in the front line. Four minutes and 40 seconds left to play. Everyone in the stadium is on their feet. Out of the huddle comes the Duke team. Second down, six. Single wing back to the right. Clark and Davis deep. The ball is passed to Davis. Davis is at the seven. He's at the five. And he's knocked out of bounds to the four-yard line. Before he is finally knocked out, he got to the four-yard line. And it was Freddie Grant now in his fullback for Alabama, who knocked him out of bounds. It's third down, three and a half to go for that touchdown. Down will give him to the three and a half yard line. Substitute coming in, and it is Hodges coming back into fullback. Grant going out for Alabama. Hodges is back into that backfield for defensive purposes. The Alabama team is tucking it up along this line of scrimmage. There's plenty of fire, plenty of pep on that ball club. They're fighting with their backs to the wall. This scores 26 to 20. Alabama lead. Duke has two, yes, two downs to go three and a half yards. Single wing back off to the right. Davis is back with track. The ball is back to Davis. Davis is at the four, and he's hit at the three-yard line. That's the yard advance. There was a big pile-up for him down there as he wriggled and twisted his way, and they're facing the ball down now about two and a half yards from that goal line. It's fourth down. A great tackle by John Wozniak and Tom Whitley. We'll say it's exactly two yards of the on file. So it's fourth down, two to go for a touchdown. Four minutes left to play in the ball game. Alabama leads 26 to 20. It's Duke ball. Duke going back into a huddle. Duke has Stevens, Clark, Davis, and LaRue in the backfield. This is their chance. It's single wing back to the right. Clark is deep with Davis. The ball is passed to Davis. Davis is at that goal line. Alabama fights him, and he is stopped at the one foot line. He stopped at the one foot line by Vaughn Matthew and John Wozniak as they came in, stopped him a foot away from the goal line. Alabama's ball, first and ten to go. What a goal line stand Alabama put on. They stopped Duke a foot away from that goal line in the, with only four minutes left to go. Four minutes left to go in the ball game. Alabama substitution. Self comes back in the quarterback. Morrow comes out. Time is out down on the field. Less than four minutes left to play in the ball game. The ball's a foot away from the goal line. Trainers are coming out from both sidelines. I'd like to take this opportunity of congratulating men around the country to make these broadcasts possible. Men like Sam and Joe Stampleman, Joe Spang, and Craig Smith. I'm very happy to hear that Craig Smith is rapidly recovered. The right time is still out down on the field. The score here, 26 to 20. Alabama leads Duke. Duke moved that ball from their own 46-yard line after the kickoff all the way down to the one-foot line and then lost it. Time, Jack timing left to play, three minutes and 36 seconds. Three minutes and 36 left. This game to play is Alabama's using those towels. Funny, the trainers are in for both ball clubs. This has been a thrilling game all the way. Sugar Bowl Classic, the 11th annual Sugar Bowl game from New Orleans, Louisiana, in Sugar Bowl Stadium. The man's are picking up the tempo. The Duke substitution is being sent in by Eddie Cameron. Frank Irwin coming in at right tackle. Just listen to the crowd and the music.
Back to the ball game. Alabama's ball dropping back in front formation. Goes Harry Gilmer, nine yards deep in the end zone. There's the passing center. He is grounding the ball. Very smart play for the safety. Very smart play. Harry Gilmer took the passing center, grounded the ball to bring the ball out to the 20 yard line, put it in play from that spot. The score now is 26 to 22. Harry Gilmer playing heads up football, took the passing center, down the ball. 26 to 22. That was a very smart play, and it'll go down to the records of the afternoon ball playing this afternoon as a very strategic gesture, one that gave two points to Duke, but that gives Alabama a chance to get away from their goal line and put the ball in play any way they want to. It looks like they're going to punt it from the 15-yard line. Alabama, automatic safety that time by Harry Gilmer, who's played a great game today for the Alabama team. It scores 26 to 22. Gilmer is funny. Gilmer gets the ball down the field and hits on the 45, down to the 46 off there and drops back to the 45, the 40, the 41, the 39 yard line by George Clark. Clark puts the ball on his own 40 and wasted all the way down to the 39 yard line of Alabama. The tension once more returns and there's three minutes and ten seconds left to play in the game and once more Duke is in scoring position on the tremendous return by George Clark of 20 yards of that front. He really raced it down the Cross those chalk marks. First and ten to go now for Duke in the 39 yard line of Alabama. Single wing back off to the right. George Clark back. Score 26 to 22. Alabama lead. Ball was passed to Davis. Davis gives it the right half back to Rue. The Rue is cutting back at the 40. He's down to the 37, the 35. Still going at the 30. And caught up on the 24. The 20 yard line. What a superhuman effort that was. And he goes all the way down to the Alabama 20 yard line. Jim LaRue. Five foot ten, 168 pounds from Clinton, Oklahoma. You'd think he was Bronco Nagurski. He carried four men with him all the way to the 20 yard line. First and ten to go for Duke on the Alabama 20. Two and a half minutes left to play in the game. Alabama leads 26 to 22. Single wing back off to the right. George Clark back with Tom Davis. Waiting for the pass and center. The ball goes to Clark. Clark gets the 25. Running across to the 20. The 15. The 10. The 5. He's down there for a touchdown. Duke takes the lead with two minutes left to play in the game. Touchdown! George Clark racing across the top box, and now Duke goes into the lead by a score of 28 to 26. Harry Whistler speaking to you. Ray, that will try the extra point. Duke, Duke leads 28 to 26. And I told you that safety would be discussed funny. Now, if Bracer misses the extra point, they might consider that a bad play. The kick is in the air. The kick is good. And the score is 29 to 26. Duke leads Alabama. Two minutes left to play in the game. Duke will now kick off to Alabama. And now we'll see Harry Gilmer start throwing that football again. Duke will kick off to the north corner at the back. Alabama will receive with the south corner there. 29 to 26, Duke leads the Crimson Tide of Alabama, coming back on that beautiful run by George Clark, some 20 yards out, cutting off the left side of the Alabama line, the blocking was fine out in front of the ball carrier, but the maneuverability of that left half back from Duke gave them a chance to move back into the lead. So the score now, 29 to 26, Duke leads Alabama in the 11th annual Sugar Bowl package from New Orleans, Louisiana. A thrilling question, one of the most thrilling football games ever played, and certainly one of the most thrilling bowl games ever played in any bowl anywhere. And we're getting ready for the kickoff as they place the ball down. The Alabama backfield as they receive the kickoff will be self at the quarter. Gilmer at left half, Hodges at full, and Albright at right halfback, and Miss Albright should go out of there. There's a man warming up, a fellow by the name, a young man by the name of Robertson, who may get into the ball game number 11. He's 160 pounds, very fast, very fast, 5 foot 9, 18 years old. All right, getting ready for the kickoff. Raider will kick off. Whistle blows. There it is. The beautiful end over end kick. Taken on the 15-yard line. Brought back to the 20 by Albright to 24. And he's hit on the 24-yard line on a driving tackle by Fred Hardison, the left tackle of the Duke team. All right, it's first and ten to go now for Alabama. As they go back into the huddle, 24 yards away from their own goal line and 76 yards away from the Duke goal line. This game has been a terrific contest. Back in the huddle goes Alabama. Out of it they come. Alabama fighting, talking up plenty. Self, Gilmer, Hodges, and Albright in the backfield. Shifting right. Gilmer's back. Ball goes to Harry Gilmer. Gilmer's fading off to the right. Dropping back to pass. His pass is complete. That's the 24-yard line. The line of scrimmage. 
and thrown by Ed Crosby, the pass was to Hal Self. It was a short forward pass into the flat. Self caught the ball, but he was thrown as he caught it. So a second down, still 10 to go as the Alabama team goes back into a huddle. Time left to play in the game, one minute and 20 seconds. Score, Duke 29, Alabama 26. Out of the huddle comes Alabama. Tipping off to the right, Gilmer's back on second down 10. Gilmer's fading the pass again, he'll have to hurry. He gets the pass away complete. It's up to 20, the 24, the 25, and he's thrown at the 26 yard line. By first second and edge, Jockey, the pass is complete to Del Moore, the quarterback. So now it's third down, and about seven to go for the first down. 29 to 26 to score, Duke leading. One minute left to play, 59, 58, 57, 56. Everyone's staying naturally, what a ball game it's been. Out of the huddle comes Alabama. Alabama's backfield, Self. Gilmer, Hodges, and Albright, shifting right. Gilmer fading the pass. Gilmer looking for someone to throw to. He is now running the ball. He's at the 20, the 25, the 30, the 34, the 35 yard line before he is finally stopped. Just short of a first down. I believe they may have to measure on the play. Time is being called. Time up to play, 35 seconds. We're waiting to see what happens. The officials are calling time. The clock is stopped with 34 seconds left to play in the game. And they bring the sticks out to see whether or not he made a first down and that's pushing one off to the right. But for a moment, as if he might break away for the last 30 seconds, dash for another touchdown. The score here is 29 to 26. Duke lead. Breaking the sticks down on the turf. Waiting for the next play to come up. Just missed by inches of being a first down. Number 11 coming in. Robinson coming in. James Robinson coming in at right half back. Albright coming out. Now the backfield of Alabama with 34 seconds left. Self at quarter. Gilmer at left back. Hodges at full back. And Robinson at right half back. So 29 26. Duke leads fourth period. And I congratulate Eddie Cameron and Frank Thomas for the great football game they stayed with their boys out here this afternoon. All right. Gilmer's back. 10 yards deep behind the line of scrimmage. There's a the passing center. Gilmer's running the ball from front formation. He's at the 30, the 35, the 40, the 42 yard line. Almost broke away for a score. It's first down for Alabama. Second set to play. 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. The seconds are ticking rapidly away. Alabama comes out of the middle, tipping right. Gilmer's back. Gilmer's fading the pass. The receivers are down the field. Gilmer gets it away. It's a long pass high to the air. Gilmer's takes it on the 30. He's out on the 25. He's still running on the 24. And the game, I believe, is over. He got that ball on the 30. He races to the 24-yard line. Almost broke away. One more stride. He's been away for the touchdown. Alabama would once more have into the lead. The score is 29 to 26. The ball game is over. Duke is the winner of the 11th annual Sugar Bowl Classic. Played here at the New Orleans Sugar Bowl Tulane Stadium this afternoon. One of the most thrilling, exciting football games that's ever been our good fortune to broadcast. So the new team is the winner this year, and the players and fans are swarming all over the field. Everyone was on their feet for the last 10 minutes of this football contest. We'd like to also tip our hat to the fine work of the officials today. Football game has never been better officiated than the one today. They handled everything perfectly and with fine precision, and I know that the fans appreciated it. It wasn't a boo in the whole afternoon. Everything was tears. Everything was battling from start to finish. Good, clean play, very few penalties, and a thrilling football spectacle. This has been Harry Wismer. He's been broadcasting throughout the afternoon for the third straight time in the Sugar Bowl. We'll be seeing you later on in the football season. This being January the 1st, we'll be back around All-Star Football game time, probably in Chicago, Illinois. So good luck, everybody. Wish you a very happy and prosperous 1945 New Year. See you very soon, and here's Bill Brinkle. And here's the way this ball game went after that first half. In the first half, you know, Duke was first to score, then Alabama racked up three touchdowns. Duke tallied once again, and the half ended with five touchdowns chalked up on the scoreboard, and it was Alabama 19, Duke 13. In the second half, Alabama kicked off to Duke. They exchanged punts, and then Duke started a terrific charge from its own 40-yard line, led by Davis, who finally crossed the goal line strike to tie the score. And Ravens' kick was perfect. It was Duke 20, Alabama 19. Duke kicked off to Alabama then. It was out of bounds. They exchanged punts once again. Duke got a break when they recovered a fumble on Alabama's 27-yard line. The third quarter ended at that point with Duke holding the ball on Alabama's 12, and, of course, the score was still Duke 20 and Alabama 19. In the first play of the fourth quarter, the perfect pass into the end zone, but the receiver was out of bounds and it was called back. For one play, and Duke lost the ball to Alabama on downs on Alabama's 14. Alabama kicked, and Duke's charge, led by Lewis, moved to Alabama's 30. 
but Hugh Morrow intercepted a Duke pass and ran 75 yards for the tied score. Then Morrow's kick was good, and it read Alabama 26, Duke 20. Alabama kicked off to Duke. Duke returned 21 yards to the Duke 46-yard line. And then Duke started a heartbreaking drive for the Blue Devil fans. Duke pounded and plunged all the way down to within six inches of a touchdown and lost the ball on down to Alabama. Harry Gilman, standing in front formation deep in his end zone, deliberately grounded the ball in the end zone to give Duke a safety, and the score then read Alabama 26 and Duke 22. Alabama three kicks from the 20-yard line, and Duke wound up with the ball on Alabama's 39. LaRue's terrific drive took it down to Alabama's 20. George Clark went over for a touchdown. Razor's kick was good, and the score was Duke 29, Alabama 26, the way the ball game finished. But in between time, that is between that final score and until the end of the game, we had an awful lot of excitement. For one thing, the final play of the ball game was just as exciting as any you've ever seen, and it might have changed the score entirely by making Alabama the winner. That was that long, long pass by Gilmer down to Jones, and Jones was trapped on the 24-yard line and dropped at that point. So Alabama held the ball on the Duke 24-yard line as the game ended, and had Jones been able to shake himself free of that last tackler, it would have been three points to the advantage of Alabama. But as it is, it's two po- uh, three points, I should say, is in Duke's advantage. The score reads Duke 29 and Alabama 26. This has been the Sugar Bowl game from in New Orleans, the 11th of these annual classics, and by far the most exciting of any of the games that have been played. As a matter of fact, I think it's been the most exciting and entertaining ball game played any time before or ever will be played in a bowl game. I'd like to uh, give you some of the scores we have here. But in closing, I'd like to say that the fans are filing out here. They're all out on the gridiron, as they usually are at these bowl games. Everybody's having a lot of fun. We've ended now another of the great Sugar Bowl games in colorful, romantic New Orleans. But fans, the cavalcade of sports carries on. From San Francisco this afternoon, Gillette presents the college all-star East-West game. So for more gridiron thrills, Gillette offers you a 50-yard seat at the Kezar Stadium in Golden Gate Park via radio. And don't forget, the Cavalcade of Sports is on the air regularly every Friday night over another network with a rousing boxing match that's sure to give you plenty of excitement. Check your local newspaper for time and station carrying these broadcasts. Once more, the final scores of the games we've had thus far. In the Orange Bowl game, Tulsa was the winner over Georgia Tech. It was Tulsa 26, Georgia Tech 12. In the Cotton Bowl, Oklahoma A&M was the winner over TCU. Oklahoma A&M 34. TCU nothing, and here in the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, Duke was the winner over Alabama, Duke 29, Alabama 26. Now this is Bill Brangle with Harry Wisman saying smooth sailing, smooth shaving, and wishing you a victorious Happy New Year for your host, the Gillette Safety Razor Company. We wish to thank the Coca-Cola Company, sponsors of Songs from Martin Downey, the Welsh Grape Juice Company, sponsors of Time Views the News, the General Foods Corporation, sponsors of Hot Harrigan, and the Sweet Company of America, sponsors of Dick Tracy, for their courtesy in relinquishing the time for their broadcasts, which are usually heard over many of these stations from 3 to 5.15 p.m. Eastern Wartime, in order that the special broadcast just concluded could be heard. This is the Blue Network. <laughs>